Live. How come live and live are spelled the same, mean kind of the same thing, but completely different words? I don't know. I don't know either. That's one for the ages, honestly. Yeah. And then you can say we are a live. You know what else is alive? Ugga. Ugga. That dog is (laughs) ugly. That, that's what that Lee Corso, Lee Corso said that, right? That yeah. dog is ugly. <laughs> I mean, I don't that think video, he's an ugly dog. But it was just funny the way that he said it, because, you know, he does his whole, like, his whole thing. That dog is ugly. Yeah. I mean, we can't get a break from these Bulldogs, man. Played the Butler Bulldogs three times. Three times. Three times they, we had to play those chumps. Two yeah, times now in, you get the two Georgia times in Bulldogs. No, one time in Hinkle. Just it's gonna, Bulldog it's gonna after be, Bulldog. I know. We, we're going to have to play in Hinkle three times this year. Isn't that crazy? That, yeah. Wild. Who would have thought? That's crazy. Play in the barn, right? That's the actual name for it. Uh-oh. Yuli's got money on Xavier. Wow, that's something. Have, did not have that on the bingo card. I mean, what's kind of cool about the NIT this year, I mean, you can say what you want about the committee, you know, putting six Mountain West teams in and the Big East being a three-bid league, but what's kind of cool is the NIT is kind of like the Big East Tournament 2.0 now. You just have some other teams in there. <laughs> right. So... You know? And you don't, and you don't have to play UConn. Yeah, that, that's another. That's, that's another a, a big, big difference. That's another big, massive difference. difference. So, I don't know. It's kind of cool. The Big East gets to be on ESPN, so that doesn't happen very often. Right. Um, this might be the first time in history of the universe, as we know it, that Xavier's baseball team and basketball team are playing on the ESPN family of networks on the same day. Xavier is playing Tennessee right now, uh, down okay. two nothing. Last time I checked, Ugh. so I was thinking maybe we just stream that. Kenny, um, yeah. Tennessee's number seven in the country, Big but game. I think, yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe we stick with basketball and we'll try baseball some other time. I think for tonight we go basketball. Okay. So, Kenny, I know you're not very familiar with the NIT, but what are your thoughts on uh, just the overall vibe, man? I mean, it's extra basketball. Xavier's playing basketball on March 19th. Right. I mean, that's kind of, that's the tweet that I just put out for the stream. It's like, I, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard because you want to be in the NCAA tournament, right? I've never, I never played in the. NIT, so I don't really know what it's about. Somebody was asking, somebody was asking, uh, I think it was Ahmad, was like, is it a coach's decision or a player's decision? And I was just like, dude, I have no idea. Yeah. Kenny can't even spell NIT. And I, yeah. I get halfway through the word and I'm like, this, why, why even spell it? Yeah, exactly. But, we get more Xavier basketball. Uh, it's kind of kind of funny on the um, the selection Sunday s- stream. You and Cap are talking about the Big East would either be you know somewhere between a, a three bid league and a six bid league, and at the time it seemed like you know if there's more Big East teams getting into the tournament, Xavier's probably not getting into the NIT. Right. But the opposite happened. Obviously, St. John's opted out and a laundry list of other teams did too with like um, who else? Ole Miss opted out. Oklahoma opted out. Um, So the door was open. Dude, it's just crazy. It's crazy to like, they're going through and doing the teams and you're just like, like Xavier or the big East has correct me if I'm wrong here, but that four teams in the NIT. Let's think Xavier, Providence, Villanova, um, Butler, Butler, Seton Hall. Seton Hall, five teams. Yeah. That's crazy, dude. And then three teams in the NCAA tournament. So, you know, bad day to be the teams that didn't make any sort of postseason play. I can't even imagine. Yeah, that's rough. 
um, uh, yeah, Lucas, I I hadn't. I, I will, I'll defer to Paula on that one. She seems to have the inside information. I um, yeah, day one's out. I can't imagine that they would. I don't even understand know why there would be a point of risking something. I mean, if this was the NCAA tournament, maybe you see him. Maybe not in the first round, or maybe that maybe in the second round. I don't know. I don't know how severe it was or what the the recovery time is for something like that. But any Wagner Howard talk? Um, I think I'm rooting for Howard. Let's see what the. Hmm. I believe What's Gus Johnson right went to Howard, so I'm rooting for Howard. Gus Jansen. All right. So it is 1410 Wagner's plus 100 right now. Why not? It's March, dude. Is it? That's true. That's true, Paula. Oh, JFC. What's up, dog? Turn up. Great work on Twitter, JFC. Great videos. Man, I all right. Here we go. NIT basketball. We got three minutes to tip. I am excited, right? I'm excited to watch Xavier play some more this year. Quincy's gonna I mean Quincy's gonna break the record. Hundred and four threes right now. He needs two to break the record, one to tie. Sounds correct. Man, you were so you were so still there. I thought you were frozen. I get that a lot. <laughs> what are, what are they doing here? Yeah, see, this is what I don't like about ESPN. We're NIT March Madness just started, and they're showing me baseball. So what? Baseball. What's wrong with baseball? I I think you know what's wrong with baseball. It mm-hmm. is. The NCAA, the NCAA tournament is on right now. The NIT is about to start, and I'm watching Otani getting interviewed. Well, with or without inter- an interpreter? Didn't see. It was silent. I don't know if you remember this, but I watched the game with no sound. Actually, you know what? I might turn on the sound today. Wow. Turn it on. Just... Man, it's just crazy. I haven't listened to announcers call a Xavier game in so long. Ooh. I can probably name more baseball players that aren't playing anymore than I can baseball players that are playing now. Name, try to name five active players besides Otani. I know that you're going to think that I'm lying to you. But I, do, I truly don't know if I can name one. What about Mike Trout? You know Mike Trout. See, I was going to say Mike Trout, but I couldn't remember if his first name was – I thought his name was Bryce. That's Bryce Harper. Oh, Bryce Harper. So there you go. Bo Bichette, I do know because I have okay. some good cards of his. Where's the, where's the one that I no. – what's his name? Nate uh, – I am. I. I truly. I'm just. I'm just not a bad baseball guy. Let's see what I got here. I know I have some good baseball cards though. What about Spencer Steer? Lost me on that. Oh, you know who I do know? Andrew Chafin. True. Uh, Kyle Nicholas. Don't Kyle Nicholas one. is a family friend of ours. He's a. I believe that he's in the. The last that I heard, he was in the. Pittsburgh, um, like lower team, whoever their team is for that. Uh, Indianapolis, maybe. Could be. Could be. 50 50 chance. Oh, Wander Franco. Oof. Jeez. <laughs> Probably is know he, about him for the wrong reasons. Did he get in trouble for real, though? I thought I heard that it was all oh, just yeah. like. Oh, did he? Oh, I, yeah. I, I was I didn't follow the story at all. I just remember somebody saying that it was like from when he was a, a younger kid too. I mean, allegedly, he uh, yeah, got involved with 
like a teenage girl or something. But, but I thought, for some reason, I thought somebody told me that the pictures that were taken were of him when he was also a teenager. Could be. I don't know. I don't want to, you know, I know, he's probably watching this stream right now. I don't want right. to say anything that I don't know as a fact. Right. There it is. Boop, 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 boop. There's a boba shit. Boba shit. All right. Looks like it's almost game time. Xavier's wearing navy blue. Um, I assume they were, but the Xavier Georgia. MBB accounts yeah. failed to post the pregame graphic like they usually do, showing series it. history and uniforms and stuff. So I've been on edge all day. Right. So, Lucas, I read your your message wrong, and I thought you were saying that NBA basketball was better than baseball and baseball was better than March Madness, and I was like, whew. But now I see. <sighs> what are you watching on right now, Coop? Are you watching on Are you watching uh, on ESPN.com or ESPN Plus yep. or are you watching on cable? I'm watching on ESPN. Um, what's the what's the clock say for you right now? 1951. I did share my screen also to you. I think we're I think we're linked up. All right, perfect. Lazar. I'll tell you what, ESPN only ESPN only lets you go to 720. It's gross. That's ridiculous. Okay. Oh, Lazar catch Oof. the ball. We played against Georgia one time at the Georgia Dome. That was the game. Well, in the student section, or not in the Georgia Dome. I'm, I'm an idiot. We played in the Georgia Dome, but not Georgia. But that was the game. It was after uh, Mark Lyons had gotten into a fight, and he lost a couple teeth. And they came, uh, the Georgia fans came to the thing with a picture of his face with, like, a piano for his teeth. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> it is funny. There's Blue Cane. Yeah, man. A name and also an object, Blue Cane. He wears number zero for Georgia. Oh, it must be windy in there. Must be windy. I think that's why Lazar didn't catch that ball, too. It's windy on both sides. Yeah, must be. Yeah, uh, JFC, the uh, Yuli came in and said he's betting on Xavier tonight. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us. Ken Griffey the third. What? Ooh. The... Hey, it's the NIT. You try new things. I was going to say. Oh, my goodness, dude. Yeah, we'll see if there's any points scored today. What was what game was it that my dad put on the TV? I was at his house on Sunday and there was a game. It was like 13 minutes left and the score was 2 to 2. What? Yeah. It was oh either my God. It was crazy, dude. I was like my dad was like, "Man, there, there's not a lot of scoring in this game." And I looked at the clock and I was like, "There's some could say zero scoring." Yeah, jeez. Dude. Oof. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Cap's wielding the band hammer yet, Paula. Cap, I will say that Georgia does have a perfectly sized midcourt logo. Is it perfect? It, I would say size-wise, it is perfect. And they have a, a pretty long logo. You know, most logos are more, like, uh, <laughs> taller than they are wide. It's a long logo. And they've made it an appropriate size. Yeah. So, well done. You see what Cap said? 
NIT jitters. <laughs> the NIT jitters, man. I get it. I mean, you think about, you know, there's probably four or 5,000 people there. You're on ESPN. A trip to Hinkle on the line. All right, come on now. Let's Quincy. Oh, we got fouled. He did by Blue Kane. Blue Kane's trying to stop him from breaking the record, man. He doesn't want it. I think so. This is what I was going to ask you. I said I wanted to get your opinion on stream. Hmm. Do you think that Trayvon is watching this game? Thinking no. like, thinking like, man, Quincy might, Quincy might break my record. You don't think so? Uh, I doubt it. Um, you think he knows? Yeah, I would say he knows. Somebody I had mean, to have told him. This counts, right? Like postseason play counts towards the record. Oh yeah. Okay. Xavier, just we all we need Xavier to do is get two wins to stay five hundred or above. You know, it's just kind of weird, like, um, to bring up baseball again. Say a player has, like, uh, 29 home runs, and then the postseason starts. He hits another home run, his season stats will show 29. Like, it doesn't count towards your stats. It's weird. Yeah, but I think that, I mean, the year that Trayvon, what year did Trayvon break the record? Was that the year that they went deep into the tournament? Uh, I don't even know. Well, no, that's, uh, I can't remember. Was it 2018? I think it was 18, though. One C year. Okay. Oh, so they didn't go deep into the tournament. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks, Matt. This is my, one of my favorite shirts. Rebound that ball. DePaul basketball. DePaul basketball. basketball. Where's Ian? That's a great question. I don't know. Ian and Ahmad, they're, they stiffed us. Maybe so. Let's go. Get on the horse. Let's run, 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 run. Uh, I should probably start doing the score, huh? NIT jitters, man. Yeah. For all of us. Yep. This is March. <laughs> That's got you got to make that shot, man. Oh, dude. The thing is, when Dez is making those shots, he looks like he looks like the best player in the Big East. When he's not making those shots, because the shots that he takes are weird. Oh, step back. Nope. Man, I think Quincy's probably missed like his last five or six threes going back to the UConn game. Yep. Oh, that was a travel. Yeah. that And that's kind of my point too, Matt is like when he, when he's not making those like 10 to 15 foot jumper floater type shots. And then he dribbles the ball into dead space and turns the ball over. You're just like, man. And when he hits, the Hey, three, you know, when he hits the threes, he, he looks good, too. See? Man, he looks good right now. <laughs> What's up, Ahmad? There he is. What up, Ahmad? We are just wondering about your presence. We thought maybe Kenny and Cap worked you too hard on the Selection Sunday stream, and he's like, nah, I'm not getting back into that. I'm done that. with that. Oh, Dude, I'll tell you, those jump hooks that he shoots, they, where he just like like flicks it at the rim, annoy the absolute crap out of me. Because yeah. it's just like, just finish the shot. There's no reason to do this. Just finish the shot. And then when you miss, it doesn't look as bad. But when you miss that little like flick shot, it's like, people are just like, do you even know how to shoot Ooh, the ball? That was clean. That was a nice little girl. Maybe on Mac Knight. Yeah, 
still the only person I've ever heard of who has both day and night in his name. I don't know how this is the first time you're bringing this up. That's a huge, huge development. I used it in a segue of a recorded podcast. Come on, Quincy. Oof. I'm telling you, it's windy in there. It's got to be. It's got to be. Coming up on you, <laughs> Miller's is face, dude. Great. What's great experiment <laughs> supposed to mean? Oh. Is it this? Is this, this the great experiment? It, yeah, the great experiment. The the new uh the new process for picking the teams for the NIT. It's the, they're, they're calling it the great experiment. Or maybe it's uh maybe it's Maybe it is windy in there, you know? Maybe they have fans going. Maybe it's an experience. Yeah, that's the experience. It's an experiment. Wait, did it say great experiment or great experience? I think experiment. Now you're Unless making I me... Read it now, wrong. Yeah, now you're making me wonder. So I guess uh, this is a good time to do one of those out-of-town scoreboards. Wagner, hardly know her, is up 23-12 to 12 against Howard. That game has about seven minutes left in the first on true TV. So don't be going on fake TV. Go to true <laughs> TV. Um, we want to talk about NIT scores. LSU, that's Louisiana State is up 9-7 to seven on North Texas. Providence College, PC, is tied with Boston College, BC, at 8 apiece. And Cornell, um, Andy Bernard's school, Cornell, doubled up on Ohio State 12-6 to six, uh, with 16 minutes left in the first. So we got uh, some good basketball for the NIT, though. South Florida and Central Florida playing later. Uh, Richmond and Virginia yeah. Tech, Minnesota and Butler, two teams that both play in Barnes, Kansas State and Iowa, UC Irvine and Utah. So a bunch of basketball on today. Yeah, we had um, – Matt brings up a good point, though. The way that the the way the way NIT was looked at for a long time was, you know, teams that felt like they were on the bubble or – maybe felt slighted that they didn't get into the NCAA tournament, just say no. And like, obviously you still see that with some schools, but I, I mean, I don't really know. I don't, like I said, I don't keep up with the, with the NIT that much, but I would have to guess that this is one of the better fields they've had in a long time. Cap is asking me what restaurant has the best mint skyline York peppermint patties for 10 cents. Because you'd pay twenty, you'd pay twenty for those mints, and they're only ten. Ten cents for a New York, dude. They that uh, interview that Kim English did about just like the metrics and all that stuff. It's the same thing that happens in college football too. You know, like they, you don't want to play the best teams because you want to go out and beat somebody by forty rather than you know lose by five to the number one team in the country. Um, I wish that there was, they, they got to come up with a better system. There has to be something better than, than doing that. Right. Like it's going to lead to fans getting to see better basketball throughout the year. And it's just crazy that you get punished that. I mean, I, I don't think that Xavier, I'm not, this is not a, like a plea to say that Xavier should have been made the tournament. Cause you're going to have to at least be competitive in those games when you're playing the number one team, um, more consistently than Xavier was, but I'm just saying from a, the perspective of just this selection committee, there has to be a better way to pick these teams rather than just saying, oh, well, you know, this team beat St. Mary's School for the Blind by 150, and Xavier lost to Houston by 12. Yeah. Like, I mean, better? I think going forward, I would – I'll do it. You'll do it? I'll do it. I'll be the Coop Mitty. I'll pick it. The Coop I'll Mitty. Pick yeah. the entire field. Yeah, that's a good idea, honestly. And I don't – use bias in any of my uh brackets either i don't i don't even want to share my nit bracket really yeah well you can't say that and then not share it 
I mean, so you're telling me you don't have Xavier winning the NIT? Look, man, I'm not a homer. I call it like I see it. All right. I mean, can you at least tell us? Do you have him winning tonight? Tonight, I do have him winning tonight. Okay. Gotcha. And the next time, the next game. Wow. Okay. So we got. <clears throat> Let me do some research here. Hmm. Yeah, Skyline uh, getting rid of Pepsi was shocking, to say the least. I yeah. live by a Skyline and Gold Star, and I saw that Gold Star, they put up little uh, little yard signs or whatever you call it, bandit signs, and it said coming soon, and it had the Coca-Cola logo. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, no one's going to care. And then same day, Skyline says, hey, we're getting Coke. And, you know, a lot of people are upset, but, I mean, you got to play the the hand you're dealt. You can either drink the Coke and enjoy it, or you go through a drive through and you have pop at home like a normal person. So, I don't know, well, man. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just in shock right now, Coop, because you said that you don't show any bias in your brackets. Correct. And I just, I just yeah. looked at the bracket, and I see who you have Xavier losing to. Well, Xavier's my favorite basketball team. <laughs> oh, no. I just think that... Gabe, they definitely adjusted the BPI for the higher altitudes. Those schools have an unfair advantage now, too, because they, they're they they're going to be able to breathe better in these gyms. What's BPI? Oh, I don't know. I just assumed it had something to do with rankings and the Mountain West is high altitude. Oh, Oh yeah, good point. Right. Breath oh probably breath per incline or something. <laughs> I have to imagine that the I I don't know, it's gotta stand for inch, right? Breath oh. per inch. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Hey, Cap, somebody's got a oh basketball power index. All right. Oh. That's probably that same thing as like that JD Power and Associates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do um, you think if you had to guess, Kenny, um, do you think Athens, Georgia, which is where this game is, do you think that has a higher elevation than Cincinnati or a lower elevation? Because uh, I don't I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to say same ish same ish let's find out oh don't tell me meters <laughs> yeah right okay uh <laughs> athens georgia 782 feet above sea level yeah then uh so i'm being i'm being told that cincinnati is in a valley so what number did I just say? Just lost my mic here. Wow. Cincinnati is 742, so it is same-ish. But same-ish, Cincinnati nice. is about 40 feet closer to hell than Athens. Nice. So is that why they call it Sin City? I Yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, Matt, it's we've really been we've really been talking about it. Um we've really been talking about it a lot all season. I mean, you know, at a certain point you can say or to a certain degree you can say it's just inexperience, but like you know, those uh basketball IQ is something that can only be learned to an extent, right? So I think that it's it's just not something that that all players have, obviously. But you need to have a couple guys on the team that are able to that are able to carry the team in that. And I'm all I'm hearing is the same rumors as you. Truly, don't know. <laughs> 
I think I have a COVID test, Ahmad, but I also do have a COVID year. I don't know, man. We could see what happens. I mean, I know it. we'll get uh, John Dieters on the case, lawyer in, in the Cincinnati area, and um, see if he can get me one more year. I'm, I don't know, man. I The people that I've heard it from are not Yuli. Hey, yeah. look, Cap's dad's here. Cap's dad, I still have your jacket. Nice. You should bring it to Maslin. I think he's coming up. Oh, for real? <laughs> Bodies by Bob. If you're coming to Maslin, I'll bring up the... I'll bring up Dude. the jacket. I've been sleeping in the jacket. Ahmad, Ahmad says the Claude rumors are that it, Claude's taking over as head coach next year. Really? Wow. That would be... I mean, Pete Rose did it for the Reds. Are you allowed to be a player coach now? I mean, not definitely not in the NCAA, but are you allowed to do that in the NBA? In the NBA, sheesh, I don't, I don't know. If anyone can do it, it's LeBron. He'll probably do it. <laughs> I might get Skyline after this. I already ate dinner, but talking about it in the chat, I might get uh, some Coney's and a Pepsi while I can. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. No. Get that Bepis. Man, we got to do... Uh... Are we going to do a um, one bite challenge for uh, oh Luigi's? for Luigi's? Yeah, I'm down. Okay, I'll give it one bite. Uh, yeah, don't forget the York mints. What's up, Jake? Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited for some pizza on uh whatever day they were calling that Friday. <laughs> Val, Val Ackerman, I actually was just talking to her. I was I screamed at her because we didn't get more than three big east teams and she didn't she wasn't happy about it she probably won't be on the pod for a while yeah i said the same thing to her i said come on we only got three teams in and she said i don't know what you want me to do about that right. and i was like oh yeah good point yeah to be fair i think we were talking to a, an ai version of val but well yeah it was uh because the l a lowercase l kind of looks like a capital I when you right. when you uh, type it. So it actually was V A I V A I Ackerman. Yeah. So it took me a half hour to realize it was an AI version of Val Ackerman. Right. So, um, I don't know. I still think the answer remains the same. I don't know what man. Sean's pissed. I don't know what Val Ackerman's supposed to do about it. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think there's a couple of reasons that Sean's pissed. One of them, and I think first and foremost, is NIT. Skyline getting coke. <laughs> Skyline's getting coke. He is not happy. Well, there's Des looking like a good basketball player. But do you remember when we had that conversation last year? I was saying that – when he scores in the right way, he makes the team better. Yes. You remember when I was talking about that? Oh, when he yeah. scores, I mean, obviously he hits a three today, which is nice. But, like, uh, he hit a three today. But, you know, generally speaking, when he's taking threes, the team is not playing great offense. Correct. But, hey, it's the NIT, baby. It's the knit. It's the knit. Georgia's made their last three field goals now, six of their last eight. The dogs are barking. That's why I took my shoes off. Oh, man. I thought I, I could smell that through the stream, kind of like when Kenny was making tuna or uh, Cap was yeah, making yeah. tuna. Dude, yeah. I'm telling you. See, we're good right now. Yeah, I'm hearing Cap might just bring tuna up. Um, <laughs> just to microwave it? He's not even going to eat it. Yeah, just to microwave it and let it sit. Man, Georgia's on fire yeah. offensively. There's no reason to be offensive about it. 
Oh, offensively, <laughs> yeah, it took me a minute. Mm. <laughs> I love, I love that he said that. Like, it's not been a problem all year, uh, all year long. Uh, you're not listening to the game. He said Xavier's got to get the ball moving in the half court set. It's like, yeah. You think that we haven't talked? Do you think that Coach Miller hasn't talked about that? Well, they have to state some obvious stuff because this is like the first time Xavier's played on ESPN since probably the St. Mary's game. So you know, it's True. like the third time that. If someone only has ESPN, this is their third time this basketball season knowing about Xavier basketball. True. Finally a miss. Oh, what the? Oof. Again, the wind, man. <laughs> okay, I got to turn off the announcers, man. They're... They're distracting me. The guy just said, the announcer just said, oh, number 17 didn't look like he wanted the ball. It's like, you number don't even 17. know the guy's name. I mean, Djokovic, too afraid to say it, number 17. Go ahead, continue. I thought for sure that was going to be a step back. There's number 17. Nope. Number 17 from the baseline. Wow, that graphic on uh, ESPN, Xavier has never lost a first-round NIT game. They're 9-0. and So this would lead me to believe this is Xavier's 10th appearance in the NIT. That would, I mean, what? Look at a boo. Oh, boy, what did Rick say? Rick's tweet. Oh, it didn't come up. Okay, no. I'm following him. Let's see what Rick tweeted. This, uh, what's Rick's tweet, Paula? I don't see it. Me neither. Unless it's on. Oh, is it from Musketeer Report? Um, this has the intensity of Xavier's games this summer in the Bahamas. <laughs> and Athens, Georgia is kind of like the Bahamas of the Southeast. I, I actually was reading about that today. Yeah. Somebody said that it was just like the Bahamas. I mean, let's see. I'm not too familiar with Athens, Georgia, but I'm, I'm about to be. You're about to be familiar with it? Yeah, so I know it's east of Atlanta, kind of a kind of a smaller town, I guess you would say. Um, doesn't look like there's a ton of dining options in the town. Yeah, Abu has. I was just gonna ask that. I saw Andy's tweet. Abu won the NIT with North Georgia, right? Or North Texas. Oh, did they? I think so. Maybe that's not what it was. Yeah, I didn't watch any of the NIT last year. Me neither. But I just, when they were showing the the Selection Sunday show, it said that North Texas won, and I was like, oh, okay. Oh, I guess so. See? It's all up here. If I, if I actually watch something about basketball, I'll remember it. I tend to only watch Xavier stuff. So when people ask me how good Xavier is, I'm like, it's better than half the teams we play. Yeah, or <laughs> I guess almost half. Adam Frazier, former MLB player, he's from Georgia or Athens, Georgia. Okay. Um, who else we got, man? So many streaks that need to be kept alive right now. Never lost the first round of the NIT. Winning season. There's, well, I guess it's not really a streak, but um, Quincy going after the record. There's a lot of, lot, lot to play for here, Coop. Oh, yeah. You know, speaking of JD Power and Associates, 
Who do, won it this year? Well, I don't know, but like not all commercials have it have it, right? All the car commercials. So like Yeah. I feel like not putting it in there is like you're just like, yeah, our car is not the best. Yeah. Imagine not winning a JD Power <laughs> Associates. Imagine not winning a blobby. Imagine. Paula's got her chance. She got her bracket in. Yeah. There's a lot of incomplete brackets in there. I've been like a uh, uh, teacher looking at it. You got to fill them out for it to count. Yep. Oh, there's Kachi. Kachi is in the game. Is is it confirmed? Papa Caps coming over coming up to Maslin? My buzz, my buzzers should be here tomorrow. I can't wait to play with your buzzer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you're really pushing my buttons right now. <laughs> okay, well, so Cap's dad is going to be in uh, be in the igloo, the house of freeze. Yeah. Um. So that'll be fun. What what do you keep your thermostat at? 67. 67? An odd number? <laughs> what the hell? Kachi changed his hair for the NIT. This is the thing. You can do anything in the NIT. Anything you want. Yeah, I keep my um I keep my thermostat at 66 or 68, whichever one I'm feeling, but it's got to be an even number. Really? So so you don't uh, go you don't go anything between sixty eight and seventy? Oh, I won't go to seventy. Seventy. No, but, I'm saying, but I'm saying the number between sixty eight and seventy. It just in my room. <laughs> and I think Xavier's six of seven from the free throw line today. Right, speaking of sixty seven. I gotta get this thing done. Asking me about Mr. Freeze jokes. Give me a second. musket trooper wanted to talk so when i played in germany a kid made this for me and that that's the the like the derby game they call it i don't know what it says but it's I mean, even even in germany it says mr freeze i can read that it says mr freeze i'm free stelt diaries and cult uh yeah it's like i can read that i mean and then this one down here this the, the biggest das, the biggest derby in Deutschland. Das Fetisches Derby Dutchland. That that's you on the left. Yeah. Wow. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> so you played for uh is that Tigers? You played for t- the Tigers? Tubigan Tigers, yep. The who? Tubigan. Tubigan. Yep. Tubing. Tubigan. 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 Dude, we had such a good. Do you do you remember Reggie Redding played for Villanova? Nope. Man, he was a good player. He played with me that year. Our team was crazy. Every single dude on the team was under twenty five. Oh wow! If they had a women's basketball team like that, Leonardo DiCaprio would buy stock. <laughs> Who's ever? I mean, I'm I'm not a huge. Let me preface this by saying I'm not a huge like basketball fan in general. Like I love watching the teams that I want to watch, hmm. but I have not never really been a big women's basketball fan. But I will be watching the NCAA tournament this year for Caitlin Clark. She is electric, man. Oh, she's amazing. It is so fun watching her play because she's and she's got a she's got a little bit of a screw loose, you know. So like when she's playing, she's got she has that like Adam Morrison type vibe. Women have sold out six times more final four tickets than men so far. 
I don't know what that means. Sold out six times more Final Four tickets. Sold six times more, or sold? You're saying arenas sold out? Oh yeah, for the Final Four, yeah. They're uh, I don't know. They their Final Four is already uh, sold out, and we don't even know now, who's in it. Here's yet. the thing, though. I will say, sold more tickets. Okay, I see, but. I think that one of the biggest differences with, oh no, we lost cap or we lost coop. I think one of the biggest differences with men's and women's basketball is like, I feel like you can buy tickets for the championship being an Iowa fan or a South Carolina fan and have pretty good confidence that you're going to make it in men's basketball. It's like, I just think there's just as much, I mean, it's 50, 50 chance if UConn makes it right. Right. Literally. Yeah, I've got Oregon in my final four. Jeez, dude, what is going on here? Tyler Hansborough, I think. Oh, yeah. Mm. Watching her play is just, it's so much fun, man. This is this is very reminiscent of the uh, the Butler level of play, Butler Xavier game. Yeah, just them. bad. Just bad, and then for like two or three minutes, it's fun to watch, and then it just goes to bad again. Yeah, I mean, at least points are being scored. Oh, I know there's more than just Caitlin, I, but she's she's definitely my favorite to watch. Yeah, whatever happened to that uh, LSU Saint player? Bonavent- right? Saint Bonaventure opted out of the NIT. Wow. That seems odd. Unless their entire roster told their coach, like, hey, we're all transferring. So we're not even going to be available it to was play. Like a, I don't know. Like a Rudy type thing. They all just came in and put their jersey on the desk, and they were like, not for the out. NIT. Yeah, maybe. No, no, not me, coach. I don't know. Yeah, there's yeah all those teams that opted out of the NIT. Pretty crazy that it's just like what sucks is teams like Toledo, for instance. The old NIT rule was if you won your conference regular season title but not your conference tournament, then you had an automatic spot in the NIT. So Toledo, great season, won the MAC regular season title and then didn't win their conference tournament. Akron did and then Toledo just their season ends and that's it great season but you know it's over it kind of sucks yeah I don't know I just I think that you know the these postseason tournaments to a certain degree at least maybe even more they're looking for fanfare people to people eyes on the screens butts in seats and when you have a team like xavier or you know big east teams playing in the in the nit rather than toledo yeah who's probably not going to be probably not going to end up getting a seated spot they got to travel somewhere if they if by some chance they well i mean but it's close to hinkle i don't know I, i don't know I don't Xavier know. has five girls in the portal. I mean, they won like three games this year, right? Uh, did they even win three? I honestly don't know. I mean, it was we're... bad. <laughs> Who goes farther in the NIT, North Texas or the North Texas transfer? <laughs> right. Dude, that was like the main storyline for our first like four or five games of the year. The North Texas transfer. North Texas transfer. That's all they could say. You couldn't say his name without saying North Texas transfer. It's kind of like when someone gets knighted and then they are called sir for the rest of their life before their name. Speaking of North Texas, looks like they're up 38-27 against Louisiana State. 
Ohio State is making a comeback. They're only down by one against Cornell now. It is. It's actually crazy to me that Xavier is as bad as they are right now in basketball on the girls' side. When I was, I mean, when I was there, Xavier was like top five every year. Amber Harris was incredible. They had so many good players. Tashia Phillips, special. Cap keeps talking about Tarleton. What the hell is Tarleton? You know, oh, dude, that Tarleton, Tarleton, UC Arlington game, a couple or on like uh, Saturday night, or maybe Friday night. I can't remember. It was electric. What's Tarleton playing in now? CBI he says they're know. up ten at the half, and are they playing in the CBI? I don't even know if you're allowed to check CBI scores. I don't know <laughs> if the general public has access to that. The CIT. Man, one letter away from being something that's really hard to find. Quincy scored. Yo. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> the CIT's what Charlton's in. Yeah, there's no way you can check a CIT score. Gore. No, not unless you go to the dark web. I've never even heard of the CIT. I'm surprised they didn't get that dude from uh who was the scoring guy the one the dude that needed like four points? Oh, from Detroit Mercy yeah. last year. Oh, what the hell is his name? That's what I thought too, Paula. And An- Antoine, so I don't know. Anthony. Yeah, we looked something. it up. There we go. Matt knows. I, don't you have to pay to play in the CBI too? Antoine Davis. Yeah. Uh, Man, I never even heard of this sit. The sit. Or, or the kit. I guess it depends if it's a soft C or a hard C. Tarleton. Tarleton. Tarleton State earns bid as host school for NIT. Nice. Where do you think Tarleton is? Texas, like Lake dude. Charles, Louisiana or something? Isn't it in Texas? Tarleton. Tarleton. Tarleton State. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's in Texas. Stephenville, Texas. Okay, yeah, they're playing Texas Southern. 40 to 32. Can we? What's going on here? Well, Xavier's hey, made four of their last five field goals, as has Georgia. Xavier showed up an hour before tip off. Why? Traffic bad in Athens this time of year. In, stuck in traffic. See, NCAA tournament, you get a police es- uh, police escort. Everyone's saying they stayed in Atlanta. That Atlantic, Atlanta traffic's no joke. And then there's like, they've probably built like seven or eight Bucky's in the area too. So you have all of that traffic. Georgia is hosting the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championship. So there's no hotels available. I'd rather probably just stay in Atlanta and make the trip. Yeah, why not? Who says no? Who says no? There's probably only like three, maybe four hotels in all of Athens. You know, it's probably not like, oh, go one exit up and there's like another big area. You probably have to drive an hour. Well, probably not a hotel that is up to the standards of where the Xavier basketball team stays. 
Yeah, you're not going to be staying at the Motel 8. Dude, we used to, the, the hotel, what was it? In uh, St. Bonaventure, Olean, New York. There was like one hotel within like 50 miles and it was a country inn and suites. Every single other game, we stayed at like a Westin or mm. something like that. And at the, like when we were there, we got to each pick, we were able to buy a movie. Each room was allowed to pick one movie to buy as like a, you know, they wouldn't get angry at us for that. Yeah. And, uh, but when you would go to Olean, they just had like TV VCR combos mm-hmm. and you had to go down to the thing and like get a, this big bin that you would open up and it had VCR tapes in it. Oh, wow. Vintage style. Man, that was like in like this 2012. Is, this is when DVDs were doing real good. First half just about over. Just just a boot over. Just a, a boot. A boot. A boot. Uh. Just a boot. That could be either either be Canadian or North Texan. True or French. A boot. Ah. <laughs> yeah. uh. Yeah, not a great first half. I think a lot of, uh, if Xavier doesn't get it together, I think, I mean, Yuli's going to lose his money, first and foremost. Uh, So we hate that for him. And I think a lot of people's NIT brackets are going to be busted. Busted. You think they'll give me a chance to make another one? Yeah, with the NIT, probably. They probably, you know how they have the, NCAA tournament challenges where if you get a perfect bracket, like Warren Buffett pays you like a million dollars. Well, they've been paying people just to fill out NIT brackets. Nice. That's good. I mean, I got paid pound 75 bucks for just, just just filling filling one out. out. Nice. That would have been smart. I've always kind of, I've always considered that um, for, Xavier for the Vikings, just just putting like a nice fifty dollar bet on the other team, you know. Yeah. Like what's more, what's more, what's more powerful, me as a fan or Vegas not wanting to pay me money? Vegas, right? Biggest threat to world peace. (laughs) 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 Oh man. I mean, why did the devil go down to Georgia? I know he's looking for a soul to steal. Are you kidding me right now? Georgia. What? Yikes. All right. Well, not ideal there. 46-34. Our halftime score. Bulldogs. Uh, yeah, man. Oh, Hartzell, what's up, baby? Hartzell went to Xavier with me. What a guy. What a guy. What a guy. Yeah, Kenny was just talking about you, Hartzell, off stream. (laughs) Oh, man. Um, yeah, man, I don't really know what to talk about right now. Xavier's not really shooting the ball very well. Uh, 13 to 32 from the floor. One to seven from three. Uh, confirmed, Cap. Confirmed. Georgia scoring more points. They're on a six nothing run to end the half. Um. Yeah, it is what it is. Time Abu, to talk food. You know what? Abu's we should... the leading score with ten points, and that's all I have to say about basketball. Why here we're talking food now? How many turnovers do we have? Great question. Let me get closer to my iPad so I can tell you. Six. Xavier has six turnovers. It's actually not that bad, honestly. 
And I believe Georgia only has eight points off of those turnovers. Uh, discuss your go-to skyline orders. I change it up. I feel like changing life up just makes things more exciting. Um, so sometimes I'll go with Coney's. If I'm not feeling the cylindrical meat that day, I'll get chili cheese sandwiches, which is just Coney's with no hot dog, um, no onion on anything, uh, drown it in hot sauce. Sometimes I'll get a three-way. Um, Why are the oyster crackers so much better at Skyline than everywhere else? I think it's just the quality of oyster, honestly. Okay. So, oyster. <laughs> uh, North Texas, 38-31 over LSU. Um, let's see. Oh, boy. All right, so, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> is uh, the green, the green, is Greenway any good? I like one of their songs, American Idiot, I think it's called. Um. So yeah, I think they're all right. All right, what's your favorite dessert? Does it two. say desert or dessert? It's dessert. Two S's. Okay, two S's means sweet and savory. So that's dessert. Right. What is your favorite dessert? He asked you. You can't be putting me on the spot like this. Oh, he asked me. Yeah. Um. I would say banana pudding is up there. German chocolate cake is up there. Red velvet cake is up there. Strawberry cheesecake is up there. Hot fudge cake from Frisch's Big Boy is up there. Just plain strawberries is up there. Um, that's about it. And I'm, I'm a simple man when it comes to, to dessert. What, a scoop of vanilla ice cream? First of all, vanilla ice cream, best ice cream. There's no doubt about that. The But my favorite dessert is probably either cheesecake or my mom makes this dessert with like ice cream and vanilla pudding and you like mix them together and then you put whipped cream and whipped, whipped, creams on, whipped cream on top and uh, crushed Rick, Ritz crackers with like sugar and butter at the bottom. It's so good. Yeah. So good. Oh, Dude, I can't get away from I can't get away from vanilla. Um, all right. Golden Eye. Did you ever play Golden Eye Coop? Golden Eye? What's that? The golf game at B dubs? No, that's Golden T. Oh, then no. I can't remember to dot my I's and cross my T's. I get them yeah. confused. So no, I didn't. Uh know. my favorite character, you know, I was always I always like to go with the cheese character, so I was playing oddball. Favorite weapon? I mean, my fi- the most fun that I ever had playing was just doing slappers only. That was fun. But my favorite gun was probably uh, the AK-47 in that game was fun. And obviously the golden gun was, but that was just, it was too easy. My favorite level? I don't remember what it was called, but it was the one where you could, it was like factory maybe? Or you could like climb up the ladder and go outside. No integrity, Matt. Zero. And in Super Smash Brothers, I'm playing with Kirby every time. If they weren't, if you didn't want me to play with him, you shouldn't have put him in the game. Yep. What's everyone's favorite pastry? Um, Maybe like a good old, I can't remember what they're called, um, like a zinger or something. It's like a red and white Twinkie. Is that a pastry? Oh, dude. Cap, I have two Nintendo 64s sitting right underneath my TV at my house. We're going to hook it up, and I'm going to show you how to play the game. Um, 128, two 64s. Let's see, yeah, 128 of them. Let's see. My favorite pastry is probably a bear claw. 
Probably a bear claw. Or maybe I thought you hated UC. No, no, no. That's a bear cat. Cat bear. I don't know. I like that bear cat. Gabe says, what are the live odds we win this game? 50 <laughs> 50. Always. If we means Georgia or Xavier. Either way. We're plus 50, 600 50. right now. What, for Xavier to win, is it actually? Is There's no way. Plus 600? Ooh, favorite salad dressing. I just had it today. It wasn't on salad, but it's, uh, I think it's called Avocado Lime Ranch from Chick-fil-A. I bought some of that. I put that on like, plus grilled chicken. That's what I did. Or Olive Garden Italian dressing's good. Um... Yeah, ranch is always good. Uh, I went through a Thousand Island phase for about six, seven months, but grew out of it. Um, Just grew up. Avocado Lime Ranch. What's my favorite orgasmic food? I would say... (laughs) I would say probably something like... I think dark chocolate's one of those. What do they call it? An... You you do know that it didn't say orgasmic, right? (laughs) Organic. Okay. I was thinking of, what do they call that? (laughs) Aphrodisiacs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, organic. Organic. Um, What's an organic? I mean, really, can't can't any food basically be organic? Um, I would say maybe... (laughs) See, when you said orgasmic, I was like... Oh, okay, he's just going a different way with it. <laughs> Sorry, man. It, uh, I just dude, that was was thinking perfect. of something else. Um, hmm. Organic food, I guess maybe avocado. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see the thing about organic that makes me angry is that don't like, panic. It's organic. Don't panic. It's organic. Yeah, but I. The thing that makes me angry about organic food is like the the hoops that you have to jump through to make it happen. Mm. And some people just will have like one, like I can't remember. I was reading about it. It was like a lady that had a, an 18 Kenny, inch fence or hold up. We're talking organics, the word not orgasmic. Yeah. Right. The jumping through hoops. Some people only have one 18. <laughs> it, right. It's true. organics. What we're talking about. Right. I think I, but for real though, I think I remember a lady, she had like a, uh, a fence that was like six inches too short to be considered organic food. What? Yeah. Like the way that the stuff that they, that they have to do to make it organic is really weird. And then they get to charge like, you know, 40% more for the same thing. My goodness. That's corrupt. That's corrupt. Um, yes. I, I was reading about that Gabe. that dude, it's his eighth year. Yeah. He Seth played, Towns is the same age as me. He played, what did he start? It was Stanford. He and then uh, OSU. Who did he start with? I no, it was like Harvard. I think was it Harvard? Harvard for like four years. Had some medical red shirts. Played at Ohio State. Took a year off, and now is at Howard. But yeah, I think, he's. I think he, he had. Started, two, I think he's had four medical red shirts. That sounds correct. Because yeah, he's only played four actual years You're on the court. Not but. telling me the truth, Matt. There's no way. That he's going to be in college for nine years. I don't know. Well, a lot of people go to college for counts. seven years. Yeah, they're called doctors. I don't know if that counts as COVID year, you know. So maybe he gets another one because he started college in 2016. I was in college in 2016. I was Dude, a sophomore. I, like I could still sniff that I was in college in 2016. Yeah. So that means I mean, that I would have if I got nine years. At Xavier, I would have graduated in 2017. Wow. Seven yeah. short years ago. I mean, since 2016, think about all that's happened. I mean, that was, man, Obama was probably still president then, right? Sounds correct. 2016, 17 year? No, maybe not. No, no. I don't know. But yeah, a lot's happened since then. Um, Dude, my, Seth Towns, man, 
Where are you at here, dude? My uh my, I mean, Wag- might... my Wagner bet's looking really nice right now. What if Seth Towns had a kid and they played college basketball together? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's not impossible to think that he could have had a kid his freshman year, right? Yeah. So he has a kid his freshman year, and his son, by the time he graduates, is in fourth grade. Yeah. Third grade. And if he's Something's... gifted, I mean, he could skip grades even. Yeah, he... a lot of people's... <laughs> A lot of people go to school for nine years. Tommy Boy is a big Marquette guy. All right. My uh, what do you call it when you live in a dorm? There's like a guy that's in charge of like the whole floor, like a RN, R, an RA or something, like a. <laughs> you know what I'm RN, talking that's about? A, that's a nurse. Uh, yeah, no, the yeah, RN is resident. No, it, something like that. An RA, yeah, yeah. RA. Every, what like does it RA. stand for? It must be like, uh, probably like RN, yeah. Um, hey, man, I'm living in the in the medical world all day. RN, residential right where my advisor, resident yeah, advisor, residential advisor. My RA was in college for uh, seven years. He was a seventh, well, yeah, seventh year senior. But was he playing basketball or? No, he was. Really, he I saw him at uh Marco's Pizza every day. Nice. Did you know Marco? I know he, I know his brother, Polo Marco. I thought you were going with Mario and Luigi. I have a cousin, uh, named Luigi, and his brother, honest to God's name, is Mario. Huge Mario Luigi fan. Is, do I, you think, is Mario the most famous video game character ever? Uh, Yeah, I would say so. I mean, Mario's up there. Um, Pac-Man's probably up there. Yeah, but Pac-Man. I'd say Mario's probably the, the biggest. Um, I think if there's anything that would even be close. Frogger. Maybe Sly Cooper. Mario, Mario's on his own tier. Spyro. Oh, what a game, dude. Spyro Crash Bandicoot was super fun. We used to play. Did you guys ever play? Um, you're not a big video game guy, so maybe somebody in the chat. Did you guys ever play Vector Man on uh, Sega Genesis? That game was so fun. I remember, and like, I remember playing Sega, Mortal Kombat on the Sega, and yeah, I do have Mario Kart, I'm odd, um, but we were playing Mortal Kombat on the Sega, and my mom would come walking downstairs, and there would be like, you know, the, the old Mortal Kombat games, the blood just was like a little red blotch on the screen, and you could turn the blood on and off, and my mom would always make make us turn the blood off like it mattered, you know? Because she's like, it looks so realistic. <laughs> it's like Sega. It looks Dude, so isn't realistic. It's crazy, though, like how realistic things used to seem back uh-huh. then. Yeah. Like I was uh, scrolling through Instagram uh, and it was a reel of just like old video gameplay. And it was like MLB 07 The Show, which is a yeah. game I had. Right. And it looked so bad. It was like, uh, man, I can't remember who it was. Carlos Beltran for the Mets or something hitting a home run. Yeah. And it looked horrible, you know, yeah, but at the and, time, but at the time I remember playing it and being like, man, you, this looks real or playing Madden back in the day. Uh, my family would play it on new year or uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah. And some people would walk in and be like, I didn't know there was football on a night. And it's Madden or whatever, right. but that was 10, it's 12 Madden, years yeah. ago where if you look back at it, it's like, well, obviously this isn't real. Philip Rivers head is just a block. Right. Yeah. No, but they, but you can always tell people that are like, you know, probably, I would say probably maybe late twenties, probably more like 30 and older because they talk about graphics for a game. Like, Let's say the graphics look so good. You don't hear like younger kids say that anymore, but that's exactly what you yeah. said for every yeah. game that came out. You'd be like, the graphics are awesome. 
Man, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. So I guess that sentence alone might put me in uh, the millennial generation instead of the Gen Z. I'm like right on the right you on call the them, line. You call them graphics? Yeah, I would say graphics. What else would it? That, I don't know uh, what they would call it. They, like if they would call it like. They'd probably be like, damn, these vibes they say are... like the, No, they'd be like the ray tracing in this game is sick. The ray tracing? Yeah. It'd be like the look at all these this game this must have like fifty teraflops. Dude, if I said fifty teraflops and ray tracing and junior high, they'd have beat me beat me up. Yep. <laughs> these graphics are bussing for real, for real. <laughs> These graphics <laughs> bussing. Dude, These my my bussin'. my cousin's son, man. Sometimes he even my son will say things like, um, he heard somebody on a video say bet. Yeah. You know, and so then em, he was trying to sound cool and he said something to Emily and he just said he said, I bet. Like, <laughs> I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I oh, I bet. Say, yeah. I thought you said I bet. No, I bet. <laughs> It's like she's like, yeah, it's it's bedtime. I bet. I bet. <laughs> I heading bet. Up. I'm gonna catch you later. Heading up, moms. Yeah, I'm heading up, bro. I keep getting these Instagram or uh, Twitter ads where it's like these Etsy uh, shirts, and it'll be like, Kenny Freeze is taller than me. One day, um, one day. Let's go, be. Quincy. But I be bet. Like, Shirts for moms, and it'll say mom, and then it'll be crossed out and just say bruh. Like, kids are calling their moms bruh, I guess. Yep. Uh, huge update for the game here. Quincy has just tied the record for most threes in a season per my overlay. That's the only source that I have right now. And we were here to witness it as I was going it. on a rant about about Etsy I, shirts. Yeah, I bet. Mom. Man, beautiful. Bro. Beautiful shot by Quincy. Big if true. There are certain, like, there are some sayings that make me laugh every time I read them, and big if true is one of them. Yeah. Yo, what up, Wheeze? But every, because it's always like something stupid. Like, they'll be like, I don't. I can't even think of one right now. But it, like you see it on Twitter, it's that one, and then the other one is "Who says no?" That makes me laugh every time I read it too. Unless okay. it's about Justin Jefferson going to the Bengals. That, that was my does not make thought. me laugh. Oh man, Weez, dude. People are asking me about the process. People are asking me about the process of the NIT, and I'm like, man, I don't know nothing about the NIT. Carlton still working. Yeah, I was one of the very first conversations that I had with Cap. He told me that my voice sounds tall. Hey, better than what he told Rick Browering about his voice. I didn't hear that one. Uh, Did they go to zone? So when we uh, we were interviewing Rick and uh, he was on video like we hadn't seen what? it was like during covid and cap was saying based on rick's voice man come on uh based on rick's voice cap was like rick i thought you'd be bigger based on your voice I thought you'd be a big dude <laughs> i thought you'd be a big dude was he saying like fat or just yeah like tall yeah yeah he thought he'd have a bigger uh what do you call that bpi or something BMI, BPI, whatever. Breath, I can't breaths per square inch. I'm not a big Akron guy. I can't keep all of those straight. Yeah. Hmm. Weez, this is tough to watch, man. Tough to watch. Come on. Jump ball. He tackled him. Uh, Weez. Uh, people talk about Dez transferring. Um, oh, that's the I mean, that's the rumor. 
Th- those are actual rumors going around. We'll see. It, they're just rumors right now, but it's kind of been making its way around. Obviously, no one wants him to transfer, but... I've seen it. I've not just seen it from random burners on Twitter either, CJ. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just the transfer stuff so tough, and we're going to see a ton of it. Um as Once. soon as – if Xavier loses this game, right, Yeah. like tomorrow. immediately after the game, you're going to start hearing – you're going to start hearing about the transfer stuff. Yeah, and, I mean, there's going to be – obviously, there's going to be transfers coming in, transfers going out with every school. But the thing is, like, I don't know if Dez is transferring. I have no idea. All we've, all we've heard are rumors, some from people that mean more than others, whatever, but – and also, just because you're in the transfer portal doesn't mean you're leaving. It just right. it's kind of seeing what what's out there. But with NIL, it's just changed everything. You could have a a great situation. You could be the star of your team. You could be getting minutes, uh, meaningful minutes. You could like your coach. You could like everything about it. Be in a position that gets you to the next level. But if there's a school that's going to pay you double in NIL money, right. I mean, as a 19, 20, 22 year old, what like what are you supposed to do? You know, it's yeah, just CJ, but the CJ whole landscape. That's exactly that was exactly my uh, my my reaction when I heard it the first time. I thought it was somebody saying that they wanted Des to transfer, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" And then I talked to a couple people, and they were like, "No, it's not about that. It's like you know, they he we're we're hearing that he's thinking about putting his name in." And I was like, "Damn." I don't know, man. We'll but see. But the thing is, is like, if somebody wants to go out and pay him crazy, like, you know, at, at a certain point, you have to say, like, yeah, he's a great player. Can we develop somebody to do what he does? Those are all just questions that, you know, the the staff's going to have to deal with. But if they're making – I mean, I, I'm not even going to talk about it, but if he's, if he's going to make the money that people are – no, he's not putting his name in the draft. But if he's going to make the money that I'm hearing that he could make, I just don't know if Xavier would want to make that bet that next year he's going to come back with a three-point shot. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's just – it's changing everything, whether it's for better or for worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, all you can do as – obviously, we can't do anything. But as coaching staffs, all you can do is adapt to it. Whoever's going to handle the NIO and transfer portal landscape best is are going to be the teams that are successful moving forward. Right. Paula, I'm telling you right now, the money that I'm hearing that he may be worth on the market, <laughs> it's definitely about I mean, I there may be other reasons, but there's definitely there's definitely something to do it's with a big reason. Yeah. yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, also like Put yourself in a college basketball player's shoes, any of them. Like, I mean, I do it right now. You know, if like your job you're at or whatever, you're happy with it. You like your boss. You like where you live. Everything like that. Um, you know, if another company from another state's like, hey, we're gonna pay you three times as much. Like, psh, I'm out. You know, dude. Oh man. So Hartzell, the, like, I would, I would have stayed in college for, for 15 years. If, if I was getting paid to play, you gotta be kidding me. And CJ, man, I would think about it all the, like they used to have at the, the casino. What was the casino when we were there? Um, Jack. Cause it's the Jack now, but it didn't used to be. Oh, it's, it, it's hard rock now. Um, oh no, maybe it was the Jack back then. I think it started as Jack. Yeah. They dude, I walked in there one of the very first times. And the very first times that like right when it was open and as soon as you walked in, it was, just, there was a giant picture of me like dunking a ball. I think it was the one where I'm like dunking the ball and I'm just like hanging on the rim for a second. And I was like, I think back to that. I'd be like, man, they just were allowed to do that. That's crazy actually. Well, it's crazy. I always uh, go back to something. I think it was Dick Vitale talking about it when Johnny Manziel, which this would have been the same time you were in college, Kenny, or around there, mm-hmm. was like everyone knew Johnny Manziel. It's all ESPN talked about. And he couldn't go sign autographs 
for any money where right. it was a huge violation. He'd be suspended, Heisman taken away, A&M would be banned from a bowl game, uh, maybe that year and the next, whatever, all from that. Yep. And then Dick Vitale made the comparison of Taylor Swift, who is, a, is about the same age as Johnny Manziel. It's like she can go out, sign CDs. Everyone's like, you know, knows her name. But this guy just happens to play college football instead of seeing, and he can't make a dollar off of it. So, so. yeah, it's it's crazy. And you have like um, CJ. I don't remember who it was. I can't. I can see her face, but the compliance manager at Xavier, man, I think about that all the time. Like how much we it would be like, like they were trying to they were being weird about my uncle taking me out to dinner after games. I'm like, what? like really? he's been taking me to dinner. Since I was ten years old, what do you mean he can't take me out now? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Wait, so they would like go to you directly and say they can't do that, or is it well? Like they would the just bag? they would they had to like they talked to me about yeah uh, they talked to me about it like you know who was the guy that was taking you out to dinner and I was like that's my uncle <laughs> like how do he, they like oh, it's none of my business you don't have to talk about it, but how do they. How, How did they, they know? know? Like, well, they, we used to go to like Montgomery Inn, and it would be like twenty of us. Yeah. And the guy that, uh, one of the managers on the team, somebody in his family, owned the Montgomery Inn or something. But it was like that everywhere. I mean, it was just you were always under a mic- microscope. That's that's absurd. But CJ, do you remember a dude named uh, uh, Renardo Sydney? That's a that's a guy that I think back a lot on with like when they changed the rule that you couldn't go to the NBA right out of high school and you couldn't get paid in college, all that stuff like that dude out of high school would have probably been top five pick out of high school. And then he had to go. Yeah. And then he had to go to college. He went to Mississippi State, got he had something happen. I worked out with him a lot in the summer, so I got to know him really well. But he. uh just a lot of different stuff happened. He never ended up playing in the NBA, but man, he was good. That's crazy, Weez. Uh, your AAU coaches being terrified to pay for your haircut. That's man. You hear stuff like that, and like NIL is a mess, obviously, and it's right. But changing. that's what I'm. Yeah, there, like there has to be there has to be a a middle ground here between yeah. like you can't you can't accept a dinner or a haircut from somebody to you get, you can pay guys 500 grand. Yeah. Yeah. There's gotta be, gotta be a difference. Gosh, dude, what is going on? Jump ball, Xavier ball. Talk about basketball again. Xavier uh, has not made a field goal in over four minutes, what? three turnovers in their last two minutes. Right. Right. CJ. What's what time are you at in the game? Uh, 15, 16. You're like 45 seconds behind me. <laughs> I might just need to uh, refresh it. The future is not which, looking very bright. Which I will do at the moment. <sighs> 16 point game. <laughs> 1938 Hudson, baby. Yeah, I have... Uh, I have... Time traveled. It's now down to fourteen eighteen left. There you go. We're squared up. Wagner, ten point lead with eight minutes left. <laughs> Jared. This is this is frustrating, man. <laughs> Jeez, man. These dudes are just sixty three to forty two, twenty one point lead, nine nothing run. Disgusted, Kenny. That's what I am. Yeah. There's a lot of seems to be a lot of players that uh I 
I don't know. Basketball's a game of runs. Xavier might make it competitive. Do uh do I think they'll win? No. But Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't disagree, make CJ. I, th- I just respectable. I think I don't know. Given given Quincy another game, another chance to play. Uh, I think it could have been a, it could have been good for him, but obviously this isn't the result that you're thinking about when you decide to accept the offer. Yeah, but also part of it too is like the like 12 teams that probably would have taken Xavier's spot because everyone was complaining that Xavier's in the field and they have the losing record and everything, but so many teams declined the invite that probably would have got that spot over Xavier. So. When you think your season's done and you have all these teams declining the NIT, yeah, and but they it's give also you a chance. What are you like? It's also a little bit weird though because if Xavier gets a five seed, then they couldn't have been that close. They couldn't have been as close to the bubble as everybody thought. Yeah, I, I guess I don't really know. And you're what talking the, about you're talking about. Um, I don't know if they got. So you're talking about like. 12 to 14 teams that would have been below them. So I think that Xavier probably would have made, would have made the NIT as like, I mean, it really depends on the automatic bids too. Well, I also wonder like, cause if you look at like Ken Palm, for instance, Xavier's better than most NIT teams off of that. You look at the strength of schedule and you take all of that into consideration. Like, I, I don't know, man. It's just, I don't know. Like, I, I get why Xavier's playing in the NIT this year. It's more experience. It's more reps, everything yeah. for everybody. It's right. a rebuilding year. We all knew that. Right. Um, but, and I, I don't know, man. I don't think whether you win the first round and then say Xavier goes on to play Wake Forest and Wake beats them, that to me isn't going to affect the season any more than them losing first round. Or even if they went on to beat Wake Forest and then, won or lost to Ohio State, anything short of, like, not going to the championship game of the NIT, it's all the same to me. It doesn't – like, I know you're playing for the winning season and all that, but even if you're the NIT runner-up, who cares? Right. Like, to me, that's the same result as losing first round of the NIT. And maybe players might feel differently about that, but from – when you look back on the season, it, it won't matter. If you're the runner-up of the NIT, first round, exit, second round, whatever. It's NIT. And CJ, 100%, dude. But I 100% agree with you that we wouldn't have played in the NIT. But I just, with this, oh my gosh, dude. It's like, and then he catches the ball out of bounds. Oh, okay, it was a foul. It was a different, uh, it was a different time, man, for our teams. Oh yeah. I mean, I don't know. I guess Xavier did go to the NIT or did go to the Sweet Sixteen last year. So, but the just the feel of this team all year. It, this feels like a team that if you have the chance to get extra games in, you play it. You play it. Yeah. And part of me thinks that, you know, they knew the Blob Boys would be streaming it, wanted to get us more reps as well. Right. Heading they into March it. Madness. Everybody everybody needs some more reps, man. All of us. Get those NIT jitters out the way because we're going to be streaming uh, for everyone watching. Uh, we'll be up at Kenny's um, residence, and we're going to be streaming some March Madness games on uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, we're going to have a good old time. Maybe even Friday night, depending on when we Maybe get back even. from the Ouija's. Yeah, and how it sits in the stomach and all that. Right. Oh, dude. Curious to see what the future holds for Brad, though. Obviously, he's entering the portal. Um, I mean, I shouldn't say that as a fact, but you know, probably playing lower I mean, level basketball to where he can start and stuff, but yeah, I'm excited I, to he said follow it on, him. He said it on the Sean Miller podcast that he was going to be. Okay. Yeah. So I, so it is a fact. 
But yeah, Dude. I'm, I'm a guy like him is easy to root for. I'm excited to just kind of follow him, see where he goes. CJ, I feel I just feel like with the with the NIL, I th- like we said before, like I think that it was crazy where we were where you couldn't get anything, you couldn't get paid anything, whatever. But with that, you also did have more of a build a program with what you got. Recruiting was huge. Um, and you did, you really did build a standard and the guys that came in lived up to that standard because there was, you know, depending on the year between, you know, eight and 10 guys on the team that were there to show you the ropes and show you that standard of practice and workouts in the summertime and all that stuff. And now it's like, it's just different there. A lot of that is gone now because you have guys that are moving around so much. I mean, like, look at this dude from Howard. He's played for three teams, and he's been in college for eight years. Like, I know that's not the norm, but it's still crazy that it's happened. If you played for three schools when I was there, like, you sat out for a year, and one of them was grad transfer. And, like, so you're you're at a school for at least – for probably three years, maybe two, 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 and one. But with the sit-out year – Actually, no, with the sit-out year, you're probably at a school for three years. You get to play two, and then you get your grad transfer year. I have sent Cap the link to the stream, so we may have a edition of Cap, our fearless leader. And Georgia did win the race, so there's that. Is- Xavier might not even you know, get to 69 today. We'll see. Quincy is uh, bringing it down to the wire, tied with Trey right now. Not anymore. <laughs> there it is. Hey, put that it to one hundred and six with an exclamation point. Is his? There we go. ESPN confirms single season school record. Quincy Oliveri, one hundred and six three-pointers made this season hey how many how much were we down uh against purdue with like eight minutes to go Mm, i can't remember i think we were down 16 with like eight minutes to go came back and won the game 18 something like that look at des he's like everybody just hold on a gosh darn second you guys were down a lot i know that much Man, yeah. good for Quincy, though. I mean, whatever you want to say about this season, when you look at, you know, records, you know, we'll see how long it stands or whatever, but Quincy's name's going to be etched in there forever. So he's, man, I just wish we could get more than one year. Right. I know, man. It's, it's tough, but what can you do? At this point, it's just... Hopefully we see them actually give good effort for the last 10 minutes here down 15, but you know, it's nice getting nice to see Brad getting to play a little bit. Um, Quincy breaks the record. And I mean, obviously it's on a different type of team than Trey was on, but yeah. Well, shit, man, go back to the Kennesaw state game. How much were they down in that game and came back to win? Maybe it's one of those Xavier just struggles in the first three quarters of games and of uh, first round tournament games, you know, maybe they've got to come back. Right. Man, I think about those like hard fouls. It's it's different now, you know, because you have the you have the flagrant two, the flagrant one, all that stuff. But I don't know if CJ remembers. Um, like when, if it was a fast break layup and Dante was the guy that was tracking the ball down, that dude was going to end up on his back. Like every time Dante was, he didn't care. He was going up, he was going for the ball and he was putting the guy on the ground. There was no easy layups. And it's not even just a diss on Xavier. It's like the whole college basketball landscape is not like that anymore because these guys, they're, you know, maybe rightfully so. I don't know, but, you know, it just takes away a little bit of that 
that toughness factor that we had when we were at Xavier for sure. Nate, what's up? He says, if uh, X is healthy this season, where do you think we are right now? Honestly, bro, probably the NIT still, and I don't mean that disrespectfully. I'm just saying look at St. John's, look at Providence, uh, look at Seton Hall. I don't think Xavier finishes above them, but probably pretty close to them. So honestly, man, I, like record-wise, yeah, they have a winning record and all of that, but I'm still saying – they're probably in the NIT somewhere. They might flirt with the top twenty-five throughout the year, but um, yeah, I don't. I don't think it changes it that much, honestly. You got a capybara sighting. Boy, what up, Cap? How we doing? Just gonna move all this up. How's the tuna? The tuna is great. But the ball is disgusting. The ball is disgusting. Yeah. This did is. Say, did you say the ball? Did you say the ball or DePaul? The ball. DePaul's never disgusting. DePaul basketball. DePaul DePaul basketball. So I have three topics that I wanted to talk about real quick. Okay. This is is crazy. So one, if you're going to show up to the NIT, you got to show up to the NIT. Like, Yeah, no. If you're going to go to the NIT, like, show up. 100%. This is rough. And, Kenny, we talked about this. Like, I kind of agree with Weez. Like, I think it – Choosing to do the NIT is tough because if you're going to choose to go, honestly, it's one thing for a Xavier squad to go to the NIT. I, part of that is kind of embarrassing, to be honest with you. And then to show up the NIT and then not show up is a tough, tough look, in my yeah. opinion. No, I agree with that. I think that there was taking this opportunity to go play some more. Um, you need, we, we needed to see the guys come out with a little bit more uh, yeah, gumption, if you will. <laughs> And then, like, I'm happy for Quincy, but – what's up, Weez? But, like, for – so, I love Quincy, but I think sometimes fans get recency bias. Like, Trey is, in my opinion, a top two Xavier player. I think it's David West, then Trey. With that, And that's with all due respect to Byron Larkin. Like, Byron Larkin's cool. right there. But I think Trey, for all they did for the program, is Mount Rushmore Xavier players. And for Quincy to take his record in the NIT, part of me is like, and Quincy's a phenomenal player. Not taking anything away from Quincy. Records are meant to be broken. But Trey is one of the Xavier goats. And to get, I don't know. And then part of me, too, was just like, this was a losing season. Like, the writing was on the wall. The team had plenty of chances. Um, But, I mean, if they wanted to play for Q, let's play for Q and rally around him. Like, he's playing, you know, kind of in his home and all that kind of stuff. That's great. And, obviously, if you want to be competitive, play more basketball. You know, let's take the Tom Crean take and play some more basketball. But it hurts me a little bit to see Trey's record get beaten in the NIT a little bit, if I'm being completely honest. Because and that's, that's not any disrespect to Quincy. It's just respect to Trey. Yeah. I mean, the only I, – I, I get where you're coming from um, just as like a – oh, my gosh, got you. From just like the season aspect. But it's – I think that a big difference, too, is that they're just different – they're different types of players too, right? Like oh, yeah. Quincy is, I mean, Trey was a pure shooter. Don't get me wrong, but he could, there was, there was more to, he was a big body. He could do a lot. Of, he could do a lot on defense. He could rebound everything, but um, Quincy is just like, that's what he does. He shoots threes. You know oh. what I mean? So there's just a difference in it. And I think that with Trey, Trey having that record, he did it alongside so many other things. That's another thing, too. I mean, the team that Trey played on, the teams that Trey played on were so good. And, I mean, with all due respect to JP, like, can you imagine how many shots Trey would have gotten if JP doesn't exist? Oh, man. (laughs) And I also kind of wanted to see, like, a JP, like, without Trey, like, one season. Because remember, Trey was so close to going to the NBA. Like, can you imagine how fun that season would have been if it would have just been, like, JP's, like, got the green light, like, both oh, of those man. guys would have gotten so many more points without the other, but obviously they were so great together, but it just would have been fun to see either one of them just get the ultimate green light. Yeah. That 105 record is probably like 125, 130. It's super deflated. Q again, no dice. Super deflated record, but um, no, but happy for Quincy. And Quincy had such an unbelievable season. And can you imagine this season without Quincy? Like, uh, I'd rather ooh. not. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it was just no. so easy to rally behind and. What a good dude. But uh, CJ, 
is absolutely right too. Two Holloway, oh, 100%. two Holloways Oof. on that Mount Rushmore, right alongside him. I was, I was getting ready to, getting ready to say that, but I was letting you have your moment there. Two, yeah, I appreciate that. Two is a no brainer, you know, a Mount Rushmore player for sure. Two, Trayvon, okay, Byron, David West. Yeah. And there's a bunch of greats in there, but like there are some that you just can't. Like David West, you can't argue with. I feel like right. Trey, you can't argue with. I don't think Trey, you could you argue, with argue with any of those four. I think those are the four. Like, oh, man, dude, it's hard to pick Sato. one other player. Like, Sato was great too, but like, you can poke holes in the argument, I think. See, I think with, with, uh, with two, especially, like, you know, he, the way that he played the game, the way that he, approached the game of basketball not just as you know the Xavier point guard but just the way that he treated the game his dude he was just just a different level man yeah I've seen a lot of Tyrone Hill stuff too and I think Tyrone Hill is right there too um but the problem is you have to make you if you're going to say Mount Rushmore you got to pick four somebody's right, yeah. somebody that's probably maybe yeah. deserving is going to get left off yeah, like, who gets taken yeah, off for Tyrone Hill yeah, I don't I, know. I agree. I mean, I think if you're going to go to that, you're probably taking off two or Trey, because you're not taking off. You're not taking Low off key. David West. Definitely not taking off David West. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a tough take here. I'm putting Trey over Belart. If I'm being honest, I mean, definitely different. The competition's different. The teams around him are different. Everything like that. I mean, I don't think that's. And it, you're right. It's so hard and to I, compare. And him. I think that you're gonna. I think that that argument is gonna take down to. It's gonna take. Um, it's gonna come down to when you became a Xavier fan, right? Yeah. If right. you were a Xavier fan when, if you were like in college or became a Xavier fan right around the time as B Lark, then you're gonna say B Lark. CJ, you know it, I mean? it would be a fun argument too. The ranks on one year transfers too. Oh, dude, um, they're. It, we're. I mean, we're at this point. We're debating between Sule and Quincy because. Oh yeah, Jordan Crawford. Yeah, not Jake Crawford. No, but yeah. I'm saying no. I'm saying he's in a league of okay, his own. Yeah, Jake, I was gonna say. Oh, okay. I <laughs> yeah. was gonna say like. No, it's, I would Sule, probably yeah, Sule yeah. over Q. Sule was so good. Just be, but um, just because I, I think I would probably say the same thing, but I think that it probably has a lot to do with like the same thing. Like I, I had just gotten back into like rooting for Xavier basketball again. Yeah, they go to the Sweet Sixteen. That season was the season was up and down. You know. <laughs> Kennesaw State or Kennesaw State, everybody's saying like, oh man, I don't think Xavier has it, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's hilarious now to think about the problems that we felt like we had last year, oh, right? No when it's problem. like, are they going to win? Are they going to win the first game? It's a close game. And then there's no chance they win in the Sweet 16 against Pitt because of yeah. just, you know, they had just had that bad loss to Marquette in the Big East Championship. And then, you know, then Kennesaw State was just a terrible game. Yeah. So oh, can you imagine? I just, and, yeah. Oof. But Sule, Sule, Sule was right such a now. good player, man. The program right now, if we lose that Kennesaw State game, it's just like, oh, the vibes would be horrendous if we lost that Kennesaw State game. Oh. Yeah. Which, oh. and at, at that point, too, I think you, and not to say that this is the way that I would think or that it has any plausibility to it, but you would have had people coming after. I, yo, you would have people yo, coming yo, after Miller for sure. Oh, hundred no. percent. Fans and will yes. go at people for and the fact that he got any anything this year about his job was absolutely ridiculous. Like with, I mean, especially too. It's like if you have a healthy Jerome and Zach, this is I think a top twenty five ish team. Maybe maybe not bona fide top twenty five, but I think because, like easily... think about think about what like Lazar for example, his role would have been, you know, he's gonna get five to 12 minutes a game come in try and hit like one or two threes and that's just what he does right and then you and then it's just back to your one two punch with hunter and freemantle but the crazy thing was watching hunter in practice dude like he looked like a oh, three man when he was yeah. like and he was and he doesn't even have the lungs yet i mean he was guarding he was guarding the two or the three on defense every single time the dude can move like the, the the progression that he had from the beginning of last year to the end when they're playing against Texas, like he became a Xavier fan favorite. Like it seemed like, you know, right after Freeman goes down and then everybody's kind of looking at it like, all right, well, season's over. And then he comes in and just turns into this player. That's so far beyond what everybody thought he was going to be. And that was, that was great, man. 
he is a defensive juggernaut. Mm. The Kennesaw State game, I think that without Jerome, there's no way we win that game. Oh, and no. that immediately made him like a Xavier legend. Like just his that game was huge. his rebounding alone was enough to get him there. Dominant. And when and he, he got had, going, he was dominant. And he had Kunkel too. And Sue will, and Colby. Like that, that team, team was, last year. A team year last year was, was so loaded. good. And people were like people were trashing him, dude. Like, and then you I come know. to this year, uh, whatever. Nunji. Oh, team was loaded. Yep. Some guys oh, that dude, uh and, you forget about Nunji. The dude was, I know, Nunji yeah. was phenomenal. You, he Nunji just kind of gets pushed to the back, but I mean, he was know, shooting he threes. He was, in a shootout game. Yeah. Nunji was um, incredible. Des making some nice Wait, Isn't it kind of crazy to think about last year, how, and maybe some of us were guilty of it too. Xavier was a three seed in the NCAA tournament last <laughs> right, year. They right. went to the Big Insane. East championship yeah. game. And we're Insane. like, oh man, they're just not good enough. Something's missing. It was Sean Miller's first year. And right. they hadn't been to the tournament in four years. And yep. people were over here complaining like yeah. crazy. Insane. You were talking about Quincy, right? He would look good in a TBT uniform. He sure would, man. He would look good in a zip him up uniform. I'm curious. I still, to I still have my number 32 TBT jersey you guys gave me. I meant to hang it up back here. We gotta I'm hit the recruiting to see trail. What the future holds for Quincy, just where he's going to be playing. Yeah. you know, this time next year. Absolutely, I would. I, I would think TV at the TV. very least, at the very least, he's going to be playing in the G League. I think that he's going to get a. He's going to get. I think he'll get drafted. Um, maybe. Come on, Lazar. Yes, yeah, CJ talking about next year's team. I feel like we're going to learn so much here in the next couple of weeks on, I mean, literally probably tomorrow. It would be shocking to me if like, if Xavier ends up losing this game, which they've kind of crept back into here. If the, if we lose today, I bet you like tomorrow we're seeing transfer portal stuff would not shock me at all. Um, oh no. I think you're going to start to see it tonight. It could be, it could be tonight. So, but here's the thing. I mean, to CJ's point, if we can return, you know, both the guys that are injured this year. You return Hunter and Freeman, or even one of those guys. That's a huge piece. You get both. That's two huge pieces. Yeah. Um, if we can, I really, really just pray, and I feel pretty good about it. That, uh, um, excuse me, um, point guard. Um, sorry, it's been a long day at work. Um, Dave Young, day and night. Yeah. If Dave Young McKnight comes back, that was hilarious, by the way. Coop, day and night was hilarious. If uh, if day and night comes back next year with the two big men, I think Dave Young think- is so smooth. I don't of all the players, I'm most confident that Davion's coming back. Right. I right. agree. And then you get Dalen. I, th- I think Dalen could take such a huge freshman to sophomore leap. Yeah. Um, obviously we're gonna have to do some work in the transfer portal, get some shooting. Um I God, it would hurt to lose Des, man. It, it would really hurt to lose Des. Um, what are they looking at? Here? Are they looking for a flagrant on Lazar? Really? I'm a little bit behind you guys. Yeah, I believe that is. I think that's what they're looking for. Yeah. Uh, I would what's still up, love Stevie? To see I would love to see Lazar stay in the program. I'd love to see Sasha stay in the program. I think for they're literally. Fr- I think people forget that those two are freshmen. Yeah, yeah. I you think know? I think that that the Lazar Sasha thing is going to be one of. I, I don't it's know. Gonna, right. I, don't I, know. I mean, I feel just, like it's going to be one or the other. If I'm being honest, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it kind I, of. Keeping one oh, of them, I think, would be great. If you can keep both, yeah. Um, and obviously, Gitas, you can you can uh, throw his name in there as well. There's just so much yeah, uncertainty. I don't, I, I don't think that Gitas is coming back. If I had, to, if I, I was a bet, if I was, I have not on, heard one thing, so. but I don't think he's coming back. I, I mean, feel like he'd be getting a lot more minutes. I I haven't really heard anything either. Um, I've also not heard anything about Abu. Uh, but he's someone that you'd have to think it's going through his mind with what's coming back next year. And obviously he came to Xavier thinking that, you know, he probably sits for a year and then it's his, but you know, that changes everything. So we'll I see. Want to, uh, I don't want to say anything here, but it's an eight point game. It is. Xavier is kind of <laughs> creeping their way back into it. Yeah. I was only going to jump on the stream for a few minutes, but I don't think I can leave at this point. I don't think I have an option. Well, now it's a 10-point game, and there's it's, a timeout. So Des Claude the, has 27 points, Cap. You know the devil in your – the devil and angel in your in your ear, right? It's right. like the angel's like, okay, Cap's been on. Like, like, we're winning. We're starting to play well. But the devil's like, I don't want Yuli to make money. <laughs> so I've got this, like, internal dialogue going on right now. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then too, bringing in some okay. good freshmen. Did you see the um, uh, Jonathan Powell, who's I think a really good freshman, hit uh, the yeah. buzzer beater at Centerville, Centerville right? Which Keep was really cool. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Um, <laughs> CJ, oh, I wish, man. I actually haven't drank in like two months, dude. Kenny, <laughs> those free drinks at TBT. Oh man, I could I can house some white claw with the best. That dude, that TBT game with two and CJ on the court. Oh yeah. my god, dude, dude, that's what makes TBT so fun. That first game was brutal, and then that comeback though. I mean, the Elam is just electric, and to see like uh, two on the floor, like showing love to Samaje, bro, was so cool. Yep. Hey, oh, Cap, while cool. you're on here for sure, um, TBT zip them up has a team this year, yeah. So we're waiting for an official announcement. We've actually been talking to a TBT brass a little bit, talking about an official announcement, but um, I'm not going anywhere. If that answers your question. Okay, gotcha. Um, do we have dates, or at least do we know uh, roughly yeah, the you're time? Lo- you're looking at mid late July. Okay. Um, it's sh- and obviously the you've seen the the news about the Cincinnati regional being yeah in Pittsburgh. freaking Clifton, unfortunately, but you know Des Claude with the range, baby. But um, I'm really excited. And, and with TBT, it's like obviously last year was really disappointing. Um, but it's just such a cool event and such a rare event because you just honestly never know how the stars are going to align and who's going to become available. I mean, for example, it's like this is literally no eyeballs emoji whatsoever. Like we haven't even started recruiting, but like Ed Sumner's not in the NBA anymore, eligible for TBT. It's like you never know when a Nunji or a Sule or any, any player is just going to be like, you know what, it's time. You know what I mean? Or So it, it just – the possibilities with TBT are so much fun that, you know, I would just love to see it go on for years to go in the future. Hmm. I guess I don't really know. Are G League players allowed to play in TBT? G League players are eligible. As long okay. as they're not on an NBA roster, they are eligible. So Mac McClung can't play in a TBT because he played Mac one M- NBA game a year? <laughs> I don't know if one NBA game makes you ineligible. Okay. But yeah, Wolf, I can't wait, man. Dude, TBT is so cool. And then just it's just the coolest thing, I think, to me. The games are great. Obviously, we want to win. But, like, Danos, for example, just being flocked with former players, current players. Like, I remember last year's, like, Colby Jones, Trayvon, like, Trayvon, Kent, like, just loaded with people. Like, JP, Conkle, like, just looking around and seeing, like, how happy – and just seeing Danos being shut down in the middle of July. I'm like, this is so cool, dude. I know, man. J.D. Witherspoon. It's beautiful. It's it's so much. Fun. <laughs> hey, that was JD such was a, a hooper though. No, he was, and I've I've known JD for a long time. But the um, dude, I loved him at Ohio State. I was pumped to see JD Witherspoon at Dana's. Dude, I was heartbroken when he decommitted from Xavier because he was originally a, a Xavier commit, and he's got one of the toughest high school mix tapes you'll ever see. His high school mixtape is so right. tough, dude. I will have to check that out. Speaking of Ohio State, they're up by one against Cornell, seventy five seventy four. Come on, About big three and a half minutes left. I gotta check on Tarleton. Come on, uh, Daniel. Stevie, yeah, they they still count. They they put it up on ESPN. He got the record. Well, JD, that's Nate. That's your boy. That's your boy. But yeah, TBT is so much fun. But we also got to talk about the NCAA tournament here, boys, because we are about to go crazy. Crazy. Some people are into the NCAA tournament. I'm more of an NIT guy. You're <laughs> you're a you're an invitation over selected kind of guy. Right. Yeah. I'd much rather be invited to something than selected. My dad just called me Cap in the chat. Uh-oh. Well, that's my dad is referring. Well, that's better because he can't remember my real name anyway. My dad, <laughs> even my dad's calling me Cap Kenny. What the hell is going on? What's your real name? <laughs> no one knows. Yeah, that's weird. No, but CJ's right, dude. Like, our guards in TBT are disgusting. God. So hey, many guards. Back to the NCAA tournament. Looks like Wagner's up by 1.6968 with 17 seconds left against Howard. Ooh, baby. That game's they're they're up by what? Up by 1. 69 to 68 is the score. Wagner. Goodness. Um, I am going to the games up in Dayton tomorrow. Uh, family, Grambling, family reunion is... Grambling in Montana State, and then Colorado and Boise State. So my first time at UD Arena. If when I was a kid and uh, Kenny, so like I was probably like 15-ish, 16-ish when you and 
and two were like seniors or juniors when you guys were just rolling at, at yeah. X. If you had told me back then when I was like looking up to you guys and like, you know, such a, a Xavier fan, like that two was going to dog me for my, uh, my dirty forces. <laughs> oh, I yeah, right. <laughs> I would have lost it. I appreciate you, Bob. Yeah, thanks, Bob. It's been, it's been a lot of fun this year. And if, if Jerome Hunter fan club said that I'm embarrassing the Xavier fan base, then I don't know what to say. CJ, who the heck is Jason, man? That's not a name I recognize. It was funny last year because, like, I don't know who knows, like, the cap stuff, you know what I mean, like, of the players. And Trayvon was like, yo, shouts to cap. I was like, oh, my God, Trayvon Blewett knows I'm freaking cap. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, what's this about uh, Kenny, you saying Jerome Hunter fan club said who's an embarrassment? Uh, Whoa. It, Yuli, Yuli's just in here stirring the pot, man. That sounds about right. Oh, I missed something. Oh, golf is brutal. To be clear, Jerome Hunter fan club, I don't think that you said that. I'm just messing with you. Lee. Golf is brutal. Now, switch golf or we golf. Here. Wait, what's that have to do with golf? Oh, uh, CJ's talking about golf. Oh, uh, we're at. I want to uh, get. I want to get a roll blob golf event going in one CJ of these summers. <laughs> Freaking Yuli, dude. <laughs> Oh man! Cap. Calling that cap, and I'm not that talking is, about Jason. That is confirmed cap. cap. That is confirmed cap. I'm pretty sure I was on that space last night. I don't remember who was hosting it, but uh, I saw Kai Muskie was on there. Fan Club was on there. I think Paul was on there. Xavier Twitter is crazy these days, man. Xavier oh, Twitter is yo. My elite. cousin Simple Hobbies is incredible at golf. Like, I mean, really? he played in college, like scratch golfer. He's insane. If we play, he's on my team. Four that point game, cool. fellas. Yeah, that's, I don't know. What the hell is Four going point on game? here? What the hell is going on 76 to 72. Xavier was down by 23. It's Never say die. Run. This is the NIT. Jeez. Dude, Dez has got a clip tonight. But this is what I'm saying. That could have been Lazar's role all year. Just come in, energy off the bench, take a couple threes, see what happens. Let him grow. <laughs> I appreciate you, CJ, man. Um, let him grow into his role rather than being, uh, you know, this guy that they're looking for. Yeah. Like an immediate go-to guy kind of deal. I mean, he's got 30 points tonight. Who does? Des Claude. He has 30 points. He's 11. Des has 30? Des has 30. Yeah. Dude, get out of here, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. 11 of 18 from the field. 5 of 6 from 3. Des is going crazy. Ooh. All these games are coming down to the wire, boys. Okay, Des. Des has 30. That's insane. What I mean, is the score of the Wagner game? game? Wagner. Wagner won by 3. Oh, on DraftKings it says they're in overtime. Oh, really? Oh, for real? There's it says Oh no, it says it now. says yeah, it says event not found. DraftKings is DraftKings has been drinking too many white claws. Every they've every had, day they've, they've, close. they've had too many draft beers. <laughs> hey yo. Every game is close. Cornell Ohio State's a banger. Boston College Providence is a banger. North Texas up five with fifty seconds. So, there will be no blowouts in the NIT tonight. So far. I love that CJ just met you. Yeah, right. <laughs> CJ, you just gotta, you just gotta, World, ignore him, man. dude. Worlds colliding, man. He's a Butler fan, CJ. That says enough. Okay, Lazar, I am so far behind you guys. How much time you got on yours? Oh, I just went to commercial. Oh, we're at, okay. We're at two minutes and twenty five seconds. Yeah, and and counting like game currently live. Yes. 221 oh dead ball. I'm going to try to go to YouTube TV without kicking your sister off, Kenny. Yeah. Yeah. Future CJ, Yuli, Yuli's been kicked off Twitter like six times. You don't got to <laughs> worry. You don't got to worry about him. <laughs> oh, shoot. So Stevie, bagel, man. Stevie was saying something. He tweeted something about like making fun of me for, for tweeting or something. 
and Yuli liked the tweet and Stevie called me and he was like, Oh, who is this guy that liked that tweet about you? It was clearly a joke. And I was like, don't worry about it. (laughs) Man, it's a 30 to 11 run. Wow. For Xavier. Is that good? That's really good. And cap and Kenny, both the future is bright. Ooh. Oh, we lost <laughs> on jumper. It's a two point game. 76 74. A minute and a half left. My goodness. This is NIT basketball. Dude, I don't know why. Which one was he on? Yeah. Okay. Never say die, boys. So, Georgia has not. scored in three minutes. Xavier's on a 32 to 11 run now. Oh, my God. Rebound. Oh my God. Am I happy? Three on the way. No. Who gets it? Xavier basketball with a chance to tie or take the lead. Ooh. Is this is I'm this out. March? The cap Ooh. effect. Is this March? Yeah, the cap Ooh. effect. No joke. Ooh. You know, I what will say too. This? Stevie came in right around the start of the run too, so it might we might need to have Cap and Stevie in. And Weez, I feel like Weez kind of got in. Yeah, that's true. Run, CJ, so. CJ got in for a little bit under the uh, with the bad. You combine all three of us. Who? Right. <laughs> says right. It's not oh. scores oh. around the NCAA right now. Around the NIT, excuse me. All right, Ohio State up three with two minutes, Coop. Boston College up two on Providence with a minute 50. Come on, Providence. Come on. Yeah, what's going on here? North Texas up five, still with 50 seconds. So all these games going down to the wire. Yeah, Stevie, we're going to. And Tarleton we're won, gonna, baby. Tarleton won, Tarleton. nice. Woo! Stevie, we're going to need Tarleton. you watching watching the uh, watching the game from the beach or something. Dude, this game was over. Wait, Cap, are you watching the Tarleton game? I've been tracking it on Statcast like a mother. Because I was going to say, well, like, well, well. there's no way you you can watch. What the heck is the CIT? Is, Man, is that another know. name for CBI? I'm so confused. CIT. I don't know. I'm going to try and find it, Coop. Oh, it's wait, probably on like... Devin uh, Carter's not playing? What do they call it? Fubo wow. or something? What's the Tarleton mascot? I don't even know. No Devin probably, Carter. That's huge. Probably like a Spartan or something. I don't know. I think the Tarleton mascot is Carlton. Carlton Tarleton? Hopefully yeah. takes better shots than Carlton. Is is he rest? Is he just? Is it because he's entering the draft, or is he injured? He should play for Saint Bonaventure. Opt out, probably. Come on, Des. Oh, Des. And there goes the ball. Not ideal. Coop, that LSU logo is huge. Disgusting. What are you watching? I'm watching the Xavier game with 30 seconds left. I got the multicast going, baby. Oh, okay. I'm locked in on this. Georgia Xavier game. Futures. Ooh, slow roller. 78, 74, 25 seconds left. Xavier ball. Oh. Lazar played such Ignite good defense, quick. too. Davion going. What's Lazar going on? Se- oh, Lazar What's going on, Jared? Working. Is the is Fanatics stuff messed up right now? Fanatics Come on, Big Red. messed up in general. Dude, we had – we were sitting there late watching – We it was actually on a baseball game. We were watching this game – not watching baseball. We were watching college football, but we looked at the – at Fanatics, and the over-under was 10, and the game was – or no, the over under was nine point five, and the game was like five to five, and so both of us put a bet on the over, and it was like plus one twenty or something like that. Both of us put a bet on the over and got cashed out like ten seconds later. Hell yeah, easy money. And then they just, oh my gosh, he step on. Oh, what happened? I think he stepped on the line when he was. Yeah, oh. Des got the ball, stepped out of bounds. Are you kidding me? Oh, Des, man. man. Two brutal turnovers from Des. Oh, man, a whole shoe length out of bounds, too. 
God bless. Yeah, he's, he was out of bounds by a lot. Turnover? Save your ball? Called a foul. Oh, yep. oh my God. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't have mattered anyway. They had they had possession. Yeah, yeah, true. Foul on McKnight. Um, dude, we're freaking down two with a minute to go. Turnover with the basketball. Goodness gracious, man! Insane. And then, man, Des has done a lot of good today. But if Xavier doesn't win those game or win this <sighs> game, the last two mistakes he made is what. You're going to be remembering. But you're right, though, Coop. We're not even turnovers. in the game without Dez. Dez was the only reason we were in the game. Oh, my God, oh. yeah. If Dez Claude's not playing tonight, Xavier loses by All 20. Right. We didn't need a three there, Kenny. Apparently not. We did not need a three. People forget. So, CJ said, next season, can we do uh, live streams for home games at Cintas or at Dana's? Um, that could be kind of fun. A live stream <laughs> from the Barracks? A live stream yeah. from the Barracks could low-key be fire. Yeah. That would be tight. That would be. That I don't would know. Be awesome. At that, I don't know. I don't know how they would. We would how need would they to view that. We're actually like commentating on the game from the arena. I would. Yeah. Guess that there would probably be some legal issues there with the big. You're probably right. You're probably yeah, right. maybe. I don't know. Also, we'd have to give up our courtside seats when we do that, <laughs> right. so. which is tough. <laughs> we could get. We could definitely get you a Kenny cam. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. It's just us zooming in with our iPhones of him sitting oh, courtside. It's while so fun down there, man. Yeah, that dude. Those Keith Jackson gave me a that both games too were were really fun. Absolutely, the roll blob effect, baby. I thought they were gonna they were gonna get that win over Marquette too, and then it's just like oh, I know they played really well. You can't be mad at how they played. But CJ, you're right, man. This is how you want to do it, though. I mean, at least to to show some heart in this game here. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, say what you want about the season and the team in general, but, I mean, we started talking about other basketball games. We started talking about food. We started talking about the right. NFL or something. Like, it, you, this team could have easily That's a jump ball. Up. Damn, man. It's all, yeah, it's Georgia all right. ball still. But right. this, still got to take it out again. This team could have easily given up and just been like, all right, let's get to the, the final final buzzer down 23 points with no life at all and then they come storming back playing with effort i mean i think that God, says a lot providence is an embarrassment are you kidding me and bounce let's go no way <gasps> oh my god no. no neither team wants to win a basketball game man no one wants to do <laughs> it Ooh. oh man Never say die, baby. Two point game. Xavier basketball. This is the national invitation tournament, boys. People forget, Kenny. All right, 6.4 seconds. If there's ever been a time for a cue ball three. Right. Would this make it okay that he breaks the record? Goaltending. Yes. Bucket counts. Let's go, baby. Oh, my God. God. Did they call it? Yeah, goaltending, right? They're going to look they, at it. No, yeah, they called goaltending. We've got an official review with 1.7 seconds. This is the National Invitation Tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, dude. I don't know if that, that was looked, goaltending. That looked clean. That looked clean on replay. But what do they do? Whose ball is it? That's such a good question. Uh, Let me think here. It would Abu, be... Abu got the ball. Man, I do, I, seconds. I do not think that it was goaltending. They called it goaltending on the court, though. Uh, 77 or 78 to 78 is the score as it sits right now. Man, overturning it, though, like, Dude. truthfully, I don't, I don't think it's goaltending. But can you overturn it? Coop, your Buckeyes are about to win. Unless something crazy happens. Yep. They just did a wide receiver streak. Go Football Bucks. Pass. So, so, but regardless, though, Abu got the ball after the. Right. So we should have possession. I don't think it's and goaltending. I do not either. I don't think it's goaltending. 
I honestly think it's clear enough to overturn, personally. But we will see. Man, it comes down this to weird. this, dude. On my, screen, but on my screen at the same time is Ohio State, Xavier, and Thad Mata at Butler. That's a lot of that. Man, that would have – Yeah, the human mind couldn't have comprehended that 12 years ago. I, or however, I, however, it's been more than that. But yeah, I can how crazy is it though that dude just blocked that shot anyway? Look how high above the rim this ball is. Oh my god, I know. Like, I mean, he's jumping up and touching the top of the square. All right, here we go. What do we think, boys? Yeah, they're talking about whose ball it is right now. Okay. So, so it was. It won't be a goal ten then if they're talking about. That's what it seems like to me. I'm just. I'm guessing. No, we. Yeah, I would agree. I am on Sean Watch right now. He might go absolutely ballistic, or put his hands in his armpits and not react. One or the other. This is the the Sean hand cross right here. I feel like if you have sweaty armpits, you can't do that move though. One point nine seconds. So okay, so no goaltend, clean block. So the the points are off of the scoreboard now. Seventy six, seventy eight. Yeah, that's a good call, Matt. We did have the jump ball too. All right, one point nine. Oh Get Q up goodness, three. dude. Get Q up three. Let's go. One point nine down by two. And oh, another go. timeout. Oh my <laughs> goodness, dude. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, this is the National Invitation Tournament. Right. So I want to get it right. What was, what was the spread here? Because I know that Yuli's freaking out, and I would be very happy if Yuli ended up losing money. One and a half. One and a – oh, my God. Georgia was brutal. getting one and a half. That's brutal. Browns so signed North, Jerry Judy. Nor, who signed Jerry Judy? Browns. Yeah, Browns. Okay. That would have been great for him five years ago. So North Texas – Sicko's committee. Does Xavier need a three here? Yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, Kenny. What do you think? Honest question. Are you trying to play for the win right now? Do you go That's inside? A good, take Davion, a good shot. Hunter, dead. I'm trying to get Quincy off the of screen. Oh, they extended him. Okay. Come on, man. Go hard or go home, baby. This is the NIT. What do you What do you want to see here? Kenny? I want to see Quincy take the shot. A yeah. three to win. Absolutely. You let you let your season ride and die with Q. But is Quincy's Q taking the ball out of bounds, so it's not looking good. So that's <laughs> Why is Q be... inbounding the ball? They're gonna Unless it's gonna, gonna, gonna be to Yeah, it's gonna be a quick ahead. pass and a like yep. a handoff in the corner or something. Pass or something. It'll be it'll be Dez or Davion's gonna cut in. Yeah, a Q inbound is kind of wild to me. <laughs> Matt draw up a three for a boo. <laughs> I think he's that like happens, man. what did they do? <laughs> Another T.O.? Hold on. No, Georgia didn't have a timeout. What are they talking about? This is insane. Dude, could you imagine if they drove a Are they going to take time off the clock or something? Or is it going to be? I seriously don't know what there is to review at the moment. He fixes in, boys. Perhaps the dude with his back at a 90-degree angle wearing the pink shirt could tell us. Dude, what? This wedding is horseshit. Reviewing the clock, Ahmad says. Yeah, that's what they're they're reviewing the clock, but I didn't. Why are they not showing a replay? Well, why not review the clock when you review <laughs> the damn goal? Nick, Nick says the refs are getting paid by the hour. Oh, makes sense. I respect it then. I do respect that if that's the case. Per Michelle on Twitter, Butler students chanting fuck Xavier before their NIT game. That's. Strange. Why? Yuli's America. With as much as rent costs these days, <sighs> crazy Xavier lives rent free in the wrong, NIT. Buddy. You are not wrong. It is it is pretty fun seeing the scores in the top right corner of the screen. Oh, that is that is elite, Kenny. You're exactly right. Day day the first two days against the late tournament are just a mech. 
All right, here we go. 1.9 still on the clock. Quincy to inbound. Xavier's down by two. He doesn't even get a shot up, dude. Unbelievable, man. Did the clock start early? That was really it, fast. It seemed super fast. That is a tough way to end it, not even getting a shot off. That's it, boys. It looks like uh, Xavier's coaching staff's trying to see what's up, but yeah, that's that's ball game. That's Man, it. Not even getting a shot off. That's a wrap. But, I mean, uh, good good fight for the Muskies trying to come back. Fall short, seventy eight, seventy six, and that's the season. That's the season in the books. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're on to the NCAA tournament. Mm. Yeah, but dude. Dude, no it, way that's how it ends. There's you no gotta way be, that that's the way that it ends. Look, I'm probably. I just, it doesn't like. Uh, I'm probably more of a Des Cod supporter than a lot of people. And he scored 30, 30 points today. But the last three times he touched the ball, this isn't dissing him. This This is just straight facts, is one, he gets the ball stolen from him. Second time, he's one foot out of bounds and then doesn't get the shot up. Weez is upset. I just don't understand right. why. We don't even get a replay. We don't get – I mean, nothing. The refs just yeah. ran off the court. Ran off the, the chat's court. right. I mean, they just booked it. Commercial. They booked it out of there. They were done. I mean, it, it sucks. It sucks. And, um, okay, well – it maybe it was a foul. I don't know. We we might not ever find out till like a few minutes from now on Twitter with a replay from somebody. But dude, you still have to get a shot up. You gotta right. get something. Right. I still think it's a tough idea to try to do that handoff play with 1.9 seconds. Like, just try to get Q a shot, man. In my opinion, but yeah. And I'm not. This isn't a game that I'm going to blame on referees. I, I agree. If you're going to give Georgia a 20 point lead in an NIT game, like, come on. Yeah. We took the power out of our own hands on that one. I mean, I would like to say that I'm proud of the way Xavier played today overall, fighting their way back into a, honestly a meaningless game that you were getting blown out in. They could have just quit. They at least, you're right. They at least fought back. They at least like, fought back. Obviously, the last three times Dez touched the ball were not great. And he'll lose sleep over it tonight, but 30 point game for him. Yeah, Quincy see. broke the record today. So, chat folks, did, did it seem like an obvious foul? I, I honestly. So, I just, I, I'm watching it back right now. And I think that the reason they didn't call a foul was I don't think he got the shot up before the clock ran out, which is just embarrassing, dude. Like, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna see if I can. I appreciate the uh, the folks in the chat doing the Lord's work, trying to get us some likes on the stream. I do appreciate that. Yeah, very much appreciate it. And thanks for joining us for all these games this year. We'll be streaming uh, March Madness games, possibly Friday night, definitely Saturday and Sunday. Um, I'm watching this back as well. I just, yeah, we, I man, it's an honor to have you. And like, this is the last Xavier stream of the season. Um, it's been it's been awesome the support you guys have given us and you guys being along for the ride. It's been so much fun. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. And there's tons more to come. Like this was kind of a, I think Kenny and Coop will agree, a build the ship as you sail kind of deal. Um, I think next year is going to be nuts with this. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. Tons of content yet to come. This so will make the summer fun too. We got TBT. We got NCAAs coming up. I think the NCAA tournament is going to be our like swan song. We're about to go crazy for the NCAA tournament. Um, watching it back, Kenny, I don't. Yeah, I don't think it was in so time. You I have, don't think I mean, I have the clock here. I'm not going to be able to show it on stream, but see if I can get it in there. So if you like the clock says double zeros right here and he's still holding the ball. Mm. I just yeah. I don't think he got the shot. I, I really don't think he got the shot up to for them. to. I think he did get fouled, but he didn't get the shot up in time. No, I, yeah. I agree. Oh, so you man. Think was, you think it was a foul, though? All right. Well, let's get final thoughts on the season, boys. The season is finally a wrap. Um, round one of the NIT. 
what are we thinking? Let's put a bow on the season. Then we'll talk NCAA tournament, and then we will get the heck out of here and reset the vibe, and NCAA tournament's going to go crazy. Kenny, what are your initial thoughts on the season? You can talk game first season, whatever you want to talk about. No, I, I just – I think that uh, this is a fitting way for the season to end, right? Yeah. It's – I don't know. I don't really know what to what to say about it. But um, yeah, let's 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 move on to the NCAA tournament. We'll, we'll we'll start talking Xavier again here in like three or four days once we get some more clarity about. Uh, yeah. We might have leaving who's coming in. We might yeah, have some right. Some podcasts here coming up soon, and yeah. the transfer portal is going to move quick. And so Xavier is going to have almost Kenny a, a new roster here in about thirty days, probably. I mean. We'll be losing people, gaining people. It's going to be insane. Um, yeah. Coop, any final thoughts on the game of the season before we move on? Um, not so much this game. Like I, I was saying it earlier, um, I, I don't know if you were on or heard it or not, Cap, but whether you do anything but win the NIT, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go like to the championship game of the NIT and lose or lose first round. It's irrelevant. It doesn't change the season at all. Um, this season, I mean, you have to play the hand you're dealt. They did. The schedule was tough as shit. There were injuries. Yeah. Uh, it was a yep. young or ex- unexperienced team. The roster was put together, literally finished in like October, um, a month before tip off. Um, yeah. So Flying in Gitas like a week before the season. Yeah, and, and yeah. Sasha as well. So I don't know, like – I don't think the expectations were very high to begin with. I still think Xavier could have done better on the court than they did this year. They just didn't. But, I mean, that's easy for me to say, sitting behind a camera and not being around the team every day. Um, but I think it's important. Like, we're spoiled as Xavier fans. This is the floor for Xavier. Oh my God. Yeah. This I think this floor. is worse than the floor. Yeah, I don't I, – yeah. I mean, this we're – this was a one-off the floor, situation. The floor is this on the, the. The floor is in the kitchen. We're in the basement right now. Yeah, this is the basement. So I <laughs> would say, the roof. like, don't let this season change your opinion on Sean Miller, especially, or the Xavier basketball program. They're going to be fine. NIL is what. a hurdle, but it is going to be fine. Sean Miller, I fully expect to be back next year, and I think he's going to be fired up, pissed off, motivated, yep. everything to bring winning basketball back to CentOS Center, and I think that starts next year. I was going to say the same thing, Coop. I feel like CentOS this offseason is going to be fierce as hell. Like, Sean's going to be on a mission. you you got to think that behind closed doors, Sean is furious right now, like, with the way the season went. Like, I don't think he takes to losing very well. And this season could have been an awesome one with Jerome and Zach. It really could have been. Um, but I think I think Sean's going to come back for some vengeance next season. But um, anything else on the game or the season, boys? Before we before we're on the NCAA tournament, are we on the NCAA tournament officially? I think we're on to it, man. I think next we're on year, to the NCAA tournament. I, next year, I think we're getting more nuggets. They just have to change that damn slogan. Sinking for chicken has no flow, no yep. rhyme. There's no alliteration. There's no palindromes. There's no rhyming. It's disgusting. That needs to change. Uh, I think that it's starts like next year. Explorer. It doesn't rhyme. I, I'm sick of it. It's crap. It, it's crap. disgusting. It's um, disgusting. You know what's not disgusting? The NCAA tournament. Not disgusting. No, Last not I either. checked. If you're listening, you're not in the the, the bracket pool. Yeah. You are messing up. Yep. You are messing up, and you don't like York Mints. Last I checked. I think. I think I'm, you're. I'm fired up, boys. Can I just say real quick? Like, this season was was hard. You know, I think for everyone, this season was very, very difficult. I'm excited. Obviously, I love Xavier basketball to death. It hurts that this season went poorly. But there's a part of me that's excited just to kind of compartmentalize a little bit and put that to the side for a weekend, a week, whatever the case may be, and just enjoy the beauty that's the NCAA tournament. Because the best four days in sports start on Thursday morning, boys. Yep. And the boys will be locked in, dude. I cannot freaking wait. I have freaking PTO Thursday and Friday, boys. Coop and I are going to be balling, heading up to Maslin on Friday and just locked in constantly from Friday night all the way through Sunday with the boys. The stream will be. So what's our over under Kenny on hours streamed this weekend? I mean, I would have to think probably around 16. I was going to say 16. Let's I'd do 15 and a half. It's 15 always and a half, half just to make it fun. 
I think and that, I that might, might be a fun bet. If we can get over 15 and a half this weekend, we if should we get enough way. donations, yeah. um, I might scream <laughs> while I sleep. <laughs> enough donations. We, that would be kind of funny, a sleep cam. Like, just a nonstop 24-7 feed on the boys. Right. Well, we're just, and we just sleep in the chairs that we're watching the games yeah, from. Exactly. The I, war room I fear game. that I'm starting to snore a little bit because there's been a few Whoa. times when I'm almost asleep that I will hear myself starting to snore and wake up. And I'm trying to not let that happen. That's a problem. Um, Your sprinting days are numbered, pal. (laughs) Sprinting days are numbered. Uh, (laughs) Your sprinting days are numbered. Absolutely. Hey, I sprinted. If Jake's still on the chat, Jake and I, we sprinted in the rain last Thursday. Nice. Congratulations. I was sore as shit. Congrats. Still sore as shit. Sprinting will get you. But we have all kinds of stupid. Sprinting will get you. Fun crap playing for the NCAA tournament, man. It's going to be oh. something else. I, and I think we as Xavier fans deserve it. It was a tough season. Let's enjoy the NCAA tournament, man. Yeah. It's going to be nuts. Best, I mean, like you said before, and, and just I don't want to keep keep bringing it up, but, man, it was – the NCAA tournament is the best – the best sporting event. I mean, the only thing that I can even compare it to is College the World Super Bowl. Series. Right? But, like, <laughs> I mean, those are two just completely different things. But the NCAA tournament, just having played in it and getting to watch it, all this meaningful basketball happening for 12 hours of the day for four days in a row is there's just nothing like it. I'm so excited. And the feeling of a fresh field with like, you just have no idea what's going to happen. I just love that feeling of like, is a 16 seed going to lose? I don't know. Like there's that fresh feeling of like fresh, a fresh bracket is just the best feeling when it comes off that printer. It's warm. Oh, immaculate. Yeah, I think Coop, your bracket absolutely killed me. Thank what you. Was your I final just... Can you, would you mind giving us your final four? Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah. So I actually ran out of black ink. That's why I had to do all the names by hand. I had color yeah. ink, so it has like everything, but the names were in black and I'm out of black ink. But um here, I'll give you some matchups I'm looking forward to, and then my final four. So some matchups I'm really looking forward to uh, to begin with would be um, I have Duquesne beating BYU. Oh my God! Get out of here! And then they'll you play. Are just, you are just you're a you're, you're a me, you're a, you're a menace. The Dukes <laughs> playing Moorhead. I have Drizzy Drake beating Washington State. So I have Drizzy. Uh, moving on to eventually play Moorhead in the Sweet 16. Uh, I have uh, COC, Char- College of Charleston. Of course. Um, I have them beating Riz, Arizona, Arizona, and the Elite Eight. Um, I have Longwood. <laughs> um, I have Longwood going all the way. Uh, they actually end up beating Duke, who I have beating Whiskey. So Whiskey Duke. Um, I have Longwood beating them. Uh, I have Longwood going to the Elite Eight, but losing to the Hilltoppers. Uh, Then I have USC, South Carolina Gamecocks. I have the Cox going to the Final Four. So Final Four, Moorhead versus COC, Toppers versus Cox, Moorhead over the Toppers, Moorhead wins the national championship game. If the Gamecocks lose, you'll be cock-blocked. If the Gamecocks lose, you'll be cock-blocked, buddy. Yeah, cock blocked. Well, the peacocks will lose to the cocks. Okay, so either way, there's going to be a cock blocking. Yeah, at the very like I got least. clock blocked at, at the very least. At there the will be at least, least one, so. guaranteed one. Yeah, I got. I mean, my my final four is uh, interesting. I can't even remember who it is now, but I got. No, I know I have Iowa State winning. You're a big Iowa State guy, an anti Big East guy. That Kenny Freeze, I'll tell you. He's more of an A10 guy. I think that, so I think UConn is most people's champion. It's hard to – I'm having a tough time not picking UConn as a champion currently. I truthfully, in the roll blob bracket, I have UConn, Kentucky, North Carolina, and Oregon in my final four. My brother would love that. Big Ducks. duck guy. He would, he would Big, love that. Love it. Just notice well, your shirt, Kenny. That's elite work. Is there a – who that is? Matt Foley. Matt Foley. I'm 33 years old. I am thrice divorced. 
No, but hey, Stay fellas, I'm yeah, I'm I like yeah. like you said, I'm excited about the excited about the weekend. I think uh, I think we're overstaying our welcome a little bit here. I agree. I think it's time to I think it's time to wrap. Well, our last Xavier stream. Sign it off. Two words, Kenny. <laughs>